Thanks for joining. My name is Russell. Um, I am part of the website for Chits and Giggles. And today we're going to be tackling the game uh, Adventure Marked by Team Digisprite, published by Hub Games and designed by Sam Taylor. Um, what's very exciting is literally yesterday on Twitter, um, Digisprite announced that they had come up with some solo rules for Adventure Mark, which is very exciting because. As you know, I've been making my way um, through a lot of games, solo games, uh, during lockdown, and uh, I had got, you know, sent this by, um, you know, Hub Games um, to review, which I did, and I was thinking oh, I would be ashamed that it didn't come with solo rules, um, but they, they did develop them in response to the lockdown, so while it wasn't a part of the original game, um, the game rules, as it were, they've, they've specifically spent time to work on these rules um, during the lockdown period just to give people more chance to play it and I think that's an amazing idea and I wish more companies um, were sort of announced uh, kind of their solo versions like Carcassonne, like Carcassonne that was done as well I'm not sure if that was done directly in response but it's cool so yeah, um, Adventure Games, if anyone's played it before let me know Hello, it's Charlie and Francesca, <laughs> thank you Charlie I knew that from your um, from your name sorry about the thing, I'm, I'm, I'm for some reason my phone does not like to um, tell me when uh, I have a chat. I, I'm trying to connect in the chat room and so I've just checked it on the screen there. But yeah, thanks for joining. Um, this is weird because um, Charlie's a friend of mine and I caught up with him yesterday, um, which was really nice. Um, and he told me all about uh, Francesca, but I've not actually met Francesca yet. So hello, Francesca. It's going to be weird. <laughs> weird, weirder for uh, me than it is for you uh, in terms of seeing seeing like what a one way sort of conversation here. But um, feel free to join in the chat if you have any questions. Um, before I begin um, playing through, I'm obviously going to teach you how to play the rules of the game. I'm also going to teach you the rules for the basic game, and then I'm going to kind of explain some of the differences with the the solo rules, as it were. So yeah, I mean, it's no point delaying. We're going to get stuck in. Let me just switch it over to. Uh, <laughs> to a thing where I'm not taking up all of the screen. There we go. So there we go. That's the uh, game. So let's teach you how to play. Um, so first of all, Adventure Mart is a game where you play as um, managers of a shop. Uh, the camera on you is a lot more bully than usual. Um, okay, that's fine. It's gone now anyway. I think it's because I was like jiggling around with the um, my elbows on the table. Have you got it mounted on a, tri a ri uh, tripod? I do. I do, weirdly, but I don't know why it's being a bit wobbly. I tell you what I'm going to do before I check, uh, just make sure that I have um, the cameras uh, set to not auto-focus uh, because that is a real annoyance when you're doing these things. So we just check it's on auto-focus. No, that's take that off. And then um, I said trifle. Oh, trifle. <laughs> uh, I previewed this for Kickstarters. Hello, Richard, by the way. Thanks for joining. And thanks again, Paul, for, for stick. I didn't... Obviously, I saw you joined the chat before the beginning of the stream, so that's why. Uh, but that's actually a very funny joke. Uh, mounted on a trifle. <laughs> but no, I unfortunately have not. Uh, let me just let me just do one more thing. I just want to check that the camera's not going to keep focusing on my face too much. There we go. So it won't, it won't now keep sort of doddering and kind of zooming in and out. Anyway, um, oh, not yet again. Good day. How are you not playing the new Paper Mario? Well, I was last night as soon as I as soon as I finished the stream, and then I was also. Um, playing it this morning as soon as I woke up after probably about six uh, six hours sleep and then and then I had some stuff to do and then I was like you know what they did announce this I feel like strike while the iron is hot and just play the solo mo solo mode okay so let's get stuck in but keep chatting I love the distractions to be honest so please keep chatting I will get involved with the chat uh, but the Paper Mario the new one is very very good. I'll probably have more to say about that as we come to the game. But yes, you are playing as uh, shop managers in the land of wherever this is. I think there's a name for it. Um, the multiverse, yes. And uh, you've been tasked by the corporate um, uh, overseers um, or in Adventure Mart to run your own shop in this in this place. Uh, as you can see, the items, the various like kind of magical, uh, martial, and exotic items that you can sort of put for sale in your shop as well as fixtures you can put and uh, staff you can hire, all in order to sell to these adventurers. And basically, the player with the most... Um, ha now I really want trifle, yes. Uh, I had uh, I have banana bread with white chocolate, and if you want to make it over here, um, you can you can join. Um, and not yet again, so this is all good. Just knew how excited you were, but glad to see you streaming, yes. I am literally thinking about it. I'm literally thinking about Paper Mary right now. Um, because that's how good it is. It's just really fun. Um, it's just one of those games with like a really like good sense of humor and it's not afraid to make like kind of 
somewhat questionable jokes in this, you know, considering Mario is like very family friendly. Um, this <laughs> this just makes jokes that is quite like dark sometimes. It's just actually really funny. Uh, yes. Anyway. So, uh, yeah, you're going to try and get the most net worth overall. Uh, net worth is mainly in the form of money, but it's also in the form of the um, value of stock, the sort of net value of stock, which is the bottom left corner of each of these stock items that you've accumulated. And uh, you'll also get sort of some net worth, aka points, uh, in the form of some adventurers will have abilities that let you score at the end of the game. But overall, uh, the game takes place over five days. Uh, each day uh, is going to be players taking turns to do one of the following things. They're going to either um, buy something from this uh, selection here. So we'll ignore this for now. This is to do with the solo mode. But they've got, they've got stock, we've got fixtures, we've got staff. So you're either going to... Um, buy one of these items or fixtures or hire one of the staff members for the cost on the bottom left and that will go immediately into your um, display or if you buy stock it will go immediately into your hand okay um oh steph is here hi steph uh, you were just mentioned in their podcast uh we are not wizards richard was mentioned in their podcast that's cool i love a bit of cross Cross, cr cross promotion there uh anyway so yes uh adventurers the other thing you can do as well instead of you know, hiring or buying, is to sell or attempt to sell to an adventurer. And as you can see, the adventurers are actually face down right here. But if you decide to sell to adventurer, you're going to reveal a random one, and then you're going to try and sell through a bidding mechanism, which we'll get into shortly. But then you 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 bid, and then you, uh, like, outbid, and then the winning bidder will basically sell to that. They'll get some money, they'll sell some stock, and then you will end your turn. Uh, then the third thing you can do is to use a card, such as a fixture or a, a higher or even a card in your hand that has a use ability on it i'll show you this if you see that i don't know if that's going to focus on it because it's i've set it off but there's a little blue sort of arrow there which says use and if you have one of those you can use that as your action this turn uh paul says gotta go review to finish then the rule book before virtual manicon starts tonight see you there see you there yes and i will see you there because i will be playing um with paul grogan aka gaming rules uh tonight at 8 p.m uh, British time, uh, playing the game Macau by Stefan Feld, which I've never played before, and we're going to be playing the online edition on Yukata, so I'm really looking forward to that. And if you are around later, feel free to join and, and, and watch us play. Um, yes, so the so those are the three options. You do this, this, this. The round will end when all of the adventurers have been resolved, um, you know, finished. And I think, um, I believe there is... No, I think it's the end of the round when that happens. I will double check that. I don't want to make a mistake um, in that. But ultimately, the round end or the round end is triggered when all of the adventures have been sold. I think it's immediately, though. Um, final sale. Following the final sale of the day, yet yeah, all players get one final action, ending with the player who triggered the end of the round. So everybody gets one more thing, maybe to grab some stuff, and then they're done. The, e the round end, there's a bit of clear-up. There's a bit of catch-up mechanism, mechanism where the player in last place will draw... Um, draw one of each of these uh, or they can take three gold or they can take one of those items and then the the, the cards are discarded uh, you will discard up, all but one card in your hand or maybe all if you want to uh, and then you'll refill you'll deal out some new cards and then that's the the beginning of the new round um, the round begins by the way with a daily bulletin which can sort of change the rules of the game um, and obviously that will kind of be explained. And we have got some daily bulletins in the solo mode as well. So I'll kind of just deal with those when they come up. Um, but they kind of change the sort of the, the round rules a little bit. Uh, so yeah, the main mechanic here is in um, being able to, to sort of bid with stuff. So let's just use this as an example. So let's take an adventurer from somewhere in the bottom of the... Let's do the bottom one of the deck. So let's say an adventurer has been um, revealed, and you're now going to try and sell to this adventurer. First thing you'll do is you'll check the ability to see if there's anything, a react um, symbol, which basically means you, you resolve that potentially now. Um, so if that happens, you check that. Then uh, you're going to look at a couple of things. You're going to first look at how much money the, the adventurer has. That's how much you can get potentially if you sell enough to the adventurer and then you're going to look at these sort of like symbols on the right hand side these are the adventurer's demands or desires um, so you've got three different types of colored symbol that can come up red blue or green and they relate to the different kinds of stock cards um, this one has two green which means that the demand for exotic items is doubled so if you try to sell or try to sort of like uh, tempt over the adventurer to your store with a green 
uh, items, it will be worth double the quality. So that's the main mechanic in this game. Um, so then basically the first player will get the initiative token. The, the player who chooses to start the sale, they get this, which could be a bonus quality, which is what you're trying to bid with. And then they'll make an offer. So let's talk about an offer. Um, an offer involves using any cards from your hand, which you'll have a, a hand of five at the beginning. Um, you can increase your sort of um, the amount of cards in your hand through other abilities in the cards, but you will then make an offer using cards in your hand. So let's just use my starting hand anyway. I think it's five. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure it's five, right? Uh, I'm gonna make an offer for my hand. So you can see here, I've got one green and one red item, the others are blue. So the only things I can actually use to offer to that uh, adventurer are these green and red cards. These stars in the top middles of, of the cards is how much quality it's worth. So if I was to make an offer by, and you can, you can bid with as many cards as you want. So let's say I bid with these. I've got my initiative, which is worth one, and I've got one of each star on this. But because the demand for exotic items is double, this is actually worth two stars, not one. So my opening bid would be one, two, three, four. So that would be my opening bid. The other players now in, in sort of turn order would then get a chance to outbid. You cannot equally bid or underbid, you have to outbid. However, sometimes you can use an ability on your card to manipulate the uh, items offered by other players. Sorry if I'm just kind of getting through that um, a, m a missing chat, but I am paying attention to it there, here and there. Uh, so yeah, basically after that, if an out player outbids, then they are in, and then the next player has a chance to outbid the, the most high bid. Um, at the end, if you if you choose to pass, you are out of the bidding completely, and that's it. You cannot take part in it anymore. So it will let you keep going until there's one player left. That player will then have a chance to add any cards from their hand that they didn't use to bid with that the, the adventurer wants. Maybe they bid um, quite low and the adventurer has more money than the items in their hand. So for example, if I sold these, I would actually get three money for them. But if this was the sort of highest bid and I had more stuff, I can actually add stuff from my hand that matches what they want to sort of make the most of the money that the adventurer has because that's how much they can buy um, depending on the money they've got. So if it was 10, for example, they'd have seven extra and so I may as well try and sell because money is points at the end of the day and money is also used to buy these items here. So um, then, uh, then you resolve any sort of abilities on the bottom of the card that's for after the, um, the in the checkout phase of the game and then uh, any cards you've used to bid with and have been sold, they are discarded they put in your sort of like uh, reorder pile and um, which is a discard pile and then uh, that's it then you go into the next player's turn so that's the game the majority of the game uh, you are then going to keep doing that and like I said once all the adventures have been sold each player gets one final turn and then you'd resolve resolve the game so after five days uh, you are going to um, see who has the most net worth by adding up the value of stock in your in your sort of deck uh, reorder pile in hand and add any um, points from adventurers in your ledger after you've claimed an adventurer by the way I should have said it comes into your ledger so it comes in front of you now it doesn't do anything for you unless there's points going at the end of the game but sometimes uh, adventurers will have abilities that let you gain these tokens which kind of means your um, your offering for matching types of, of guild members so if there's a guild member that's a part of the fighters guild um, you will immediately have one quality on top of whatever you offer because of this um, but yeah at the end of the game some um, some adventurers will score you depending on how many other types of adventurers you've got so I'll I'll come up um, and explain those a little bit when they come up in the game um, and as well as anything else you might be wondering what this token is there is an adventurer whose reward um, is to give you one discount on um, buying stock from the cards. Because if you don't like anything here, uh, you can always buy from the top of the decks. But in order to do that, you must first discard something because these are like a time thing of the game. So if I don't buy something from here, I will have to discard one of them, then reveal that. And I'm buying it blind at a cost of four, but this allows you to buy it at a cost of three instead. And there are some things, uh, cards, for example, that let you buy stuff um, at a discount of... Um, depending on what color the item is. So hopefully that all makes sense. Uh, oh, Tom's here. Hello, Tom. Thanks for joining. Uh, interested to see how the bidding is adjusted for solo. I know nothing of this game. Yes, yeah, so this is an interesting thing because I was thinking, um, oh, well, it's no wonder they didn't do a solo mode for the game because actually it's all about bidding and how can you do that solo without some kind of specific cards that let you do this? But I will explain. I will explain all. Um, I'm just trying to think. Oh, yes, a couple of other things. If you hire a staff, um, you will 
immediately put them into your display area. However, the only time you can use them immediately is uh, Tom saying, have I uh, completed Paper Mario yet? No, I haven't, but I am determined to because um, this is a great game so far. So yeah, uh, I'll talk more about that later on after I've done the teach because there is a lot I sort of love to talk about that game. But if it's got an on-call on call symbol, oh yeah, my camera is really wobbly actually. I think I just need to maybe adjust it slightly so it's a bit more sturdy. I think it's because it's not actually fixed in. Sorry about that. So if it's really wobbly, I do apologize. Um, it's a little bit more sturdy there, I guess. But the main thing is that this camera is um, uh, solid. So yeah, so you see your on-call symbol on the top, right? That means you can use that immediately. Now, when you use a um, staff member or fixture, so let's say that I had these, if I use their abilities, I flip them over face down until the end of the round. Um, if a fixture is used, at the end of the round, you will flip it back up for free. So you get to reuse fixtures, but only once per round, obviously, you can use them. But staff must be rehired. They are generally better abilities. And so as a, as a result, you must pay for them again. And if you do not pay for them at the end of the game, they are banished, meaning they're added to a specific banish pile, like a communal banish pile. Now, there are some cards that allow you to access the banished cards, but otherwise, you can consider them un inaccessible. Uh, so yeah, there are some, also some cards that let you banish cards, like stock cards from your hand, and that'd be quite, quite nice because this is a deck building game, and as a result, um, being able to sort of manipulate the cards in your deck is quite a useful ability. So, um, that I think is um, the kind of regular rules for the game. So now we're going to quickly talk about the solo mode and how this differs. So this game um, has a solo mode, which is in beta. So these rules are not the sort of maybe final rules. They might be very close or even exactly the same, but it's still in beta, so they may change these. But I'm using the most up-to-date set of rules that were released yesterday. So talking about the, the solo game. So the solo game is very similar. Um, you are obviously against somebody called Vendatron, which is a, a robot or AI that has been created to try and um, replace people. So you're trying to out out uh, maneuver the Vendatron, which Vendatron has been represented by here, by the, by the way. Vendatron always has the initiative token. So if you choose to start a sale to an adventurer, the Vendatron's always gonna have the advantage. So you see that little token there? That's what that means. So they're always gonna get one extra money, uh, sorry, they're always gonna get one extra quality on whatever they offer. Um, at the beginning of the game, you set up Vendatron by giving them one of each of these kind of um, basic stock cards, which are the starting hands, and you'll notice those are purple backgrounds. That's because they are part of the starting hands. Anything with a blue background is a card that has been bought or added through through these this deck here. Um, so you give them one of each of the two star, two quality star items, and then you deal them four stock cards from the stock deck before you reveal that. So this is the Vendatron's hand. Now, the Vendatron doesn't do anything in terms of like buying from here. They just get a number of cards at the beginning of the game, uh, of each round, of each day. Uh, but uh, when it comes to so starting a sale to an adventurer, Vendatron will always make the first bid. Now, when they bid, they're going to look at the number of symbols on the adventure. So using the bottom cards um, as an example again, we're going to see that this one has one red and two green symbols. So they're going to offer three items. You can only offer an item um, if you have a matching uh, symbol. So they're going to try and sell uh, their best red item and two of their best green items. So look, looking at the hand here, they've actually got a pretty good start. Uh, number of cards for this. They're usually going to avoid using a basic stock card because it's not going to be their best item, but they will um, use that one to bid if it's their best offering. But these cards are never going to be banished or discarded by Vendatron. So these cards will, but these cards will always stay with Vendatron. So looking at this, um, we're going to see on the cards here that the best red item they have is this one. It's a five star um, red item. So obviously they're going to they're going to offer that. The next one is a green. So their best green item is actually this one here. Okay. Then uh, because it's four and there's no other green or oh, the other green item is here. Now they're going to make another offer here of another green item and they have no more green items in their display. So they're actually going to offer this card here. Okay. So their total now is actually going to be calculated as normal. So it'll be one two, three, four, five, six, and then you're gonna be double these cards because they have a double um, green symbol here. So it's actually gonna be seven, eight, nine, 10, 14, 18. So their opening bid is 18. That's quite big, by the way. Uh, and then I have a chance to outbid them. Sometimes I can affect the um, cards uh, that the Vendatron offers because I might have cards that sort of like 
say, oh, you have to get rid of things. So my ability to affect Vendatron, I still have some, but obviously there's, um, there is some, some cards which might not be as effective. And because um, Vendatron never has gold, when they sell, when they sell, if they win, they're going, to, they're going to banish basically any blue cards that they use. They're going out of, into the Abyss pile. Um, and they're going to keep any purple cards. They're going to take that adventure, going to add it to their ledger, um, and then that's it. So they don't gain any benefits if it increases gold, etc. Uh, however, the other thing is, um, at the end of the round, let's say that they had gotten rid of those, but they didn't win another bid. So they still have these cards in their hand. These cards are going to go into their ledger as well. So these ones are actually being worth points to them. So that's going to be worth points. So if they don't spend them to buy stuff, they're going to get them um, in terms of net worth as well. So even if they don't have a good round, they're still going to add points to their, so that, to their um, total. So I hope that makes sense. Um, there are some other specific rules. I should actually quickly check on the page, uh, the rules online, just to make sure that I'm not missing anything. Uh, there is an FAQ, but I'm sure something will come up. Um, it says during the discard phase, my, it's very much the same um, as the real game. Yeah, so I think there's actually not a lot of changes. It's just mainly in being able to um, do the vendors vendatron's offer and you might it says you might want to use pen and paper or a d20 to kind of track their bids but i think i'll be all right especially with you people watching as well i'm sure you're going to help me kind of remember stuff so yeah that's that's that um so i think that's it yeah um let's let's get cracking on i think i get five cards that's another thing i want to check um when you start the game i think you draw five cards yes five cards and i think i only have um nine nine cards to start with so yeah okay so yeah i've got a starting hand here can you see this again gonna change over this so you can see okay so you can kind of see what i've got um i might even be better off to put them over here for example so you can see or maybe even just move some of these cards a little bit further up to try and create space for them um if you by the way if you'd like me to read out any cards because i know the cam camera quality isn't isn't great um it's just because i have only got a sort of webcam um yeah actually if i did if I did this and I push this up here, maybe I even could do this because you don't need to see the um, all of the cards. We'll just reveal them one at a time anyway. And then I put my hand here so you can see it better. I think that's all right. Cool. OK, so uh, let's get started. So day one, we begin with the bulletin. So chat is Vendatron. Yes. <laughs> yes. It'd be quite nice, actually, if we did like um, a Twitch uh, chat controls uh, opponents move. But I don't know if the technology is quite there yet. Oh, I start with 10 gold in this game as opposed to 5. So I've got a bit more of an advantage. Do you know what? I'm just going to open the, the window really quickly because it's really warm in here. Uh, so bear with me a second. Ooh, needed that. It's quite warm. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, so first things first, uh, we're going to read the daily bulletin. You have added five specific um, bulletins in here um, as the rules told us. So usually there's like a deck of, of a few um, and you just randomly draw one for each day, but this one specifically told you five cards. So it's going to be one of these. Okay, so uh, I'm going to read this out in my best corporate HQ voice. Regarding the blood moon, a sinister red moon hangs in the sky. A baleful wind blows from the depths. Magical items have increased in demand to prepare for the otherworldly threat. So, basically, the rules change is this day, each adventurer desires a magic stock in addition to the stock types on their card, which is actually very good for me because I have a lot of blue cards in my hand, and as you can see, they don't. So, that's good. So, basically, every card, uh, adventurer card, will have an extra blue symbol. Now, you m might have, you know, maybe your brain went there straight away, but you might be thinking, okay, so what if a... Um, what if a, a card had uh, two blue symbols on it already? Does that mean that it's a three uh, blue symbol card? And I'm saying, yes, it is. That means that it would actually be triple the value. Each blue card is worth triple the value in that situation. So yes, that could be very good. Okay, so I'm just gonna read out the cards. I'll show you these cards, because uh, you might not be able to see them. This is Corium Chainmail. Uh, this one has a, a trade in ability. Um, you may banish a stock card from your hand instead of paying the buy cost of this card. So basically, I, if I want this one, um, I basically can just get rid of a card, uh, banish a stock card. So it's a red one. So if I had a red card in my hand, actually, that would be really good. Because I can just be like, okay, you know what, I'm just going to toss that 
and upgrade it for that. And that goes into my hand, so it's really good, I think. Um, I probably will be purchasing that. It's a three star, it's worth four money when you sell it and it costs three money to buy or banishing a card from your hand. Uh, we've got the Dragon Roll and the Cursed Potpourri. Those are just three green um, cards. Um, they both cost three money, but this one is six money if you sell it and this one's five. Let's talk about the um, Bonsai of Knowledge. Uh, the Bonsai of Knowledge, it says, it's an ongoing ability. Once per turn, you may look at the top of the stock deck, fixture deck, or staff deck. So you can see what it is, because remember, instead of buying something from here, you can pay four money to just buy the top card of the deck without seeing it. But that one lets you see what it is. So that one quite could be quite nice. I've got the Transmutation Station. This says when you use it as a separate ability, <laughs> the door just shut on itself. I'm just going to set that back again, because it's really boring. Uh, Let's try this again. Okay, I put something in the way of it now, so it should should stay there. Okay, back to the back to the chat. Okay, transmutation station. So this means if I was actually to use it as an action, I can banish a card from my hand, a stock card from my hand, or reorder pile, so my discard pile, um, and then I would gain two money or draw one stock card from my from my uh, from my. What's it called? There's a cool name for it. Uh, it's called the. Uh, storeroom. Yeah, so the storeroom. I'm going like, to go back to the storeroom and draw something. Uh, and then you flip that card. So that one allows you to just get rid of and kind of manipulate your hand a little bit. We've got Blue Mountain Sentinel as a hire. If I hired him um, as a reaction to the reaction of any uh, card effect, I can cancel it. So it's kind of negate something. Now that might not be as useful in this game. We'll see. But I don't think anything... Um, will occur to me so that one might not be as useful we've got samuel soots now this one is really cool and i've used this in the real um game uh, came up a couple of times and it was a difference between somebody winning and losing and um, you can choose an adventurer in any manager's ledger so after you've sold to someone they stay in your ledger but you can target one and put them back in the queue and start selling them again so if they take something that i really wanted i can use that or use samuel's ability and be like okay i'm going to start selling to that one again maybe i'm in a better position to be able to offer them and that i'll get all the money for it it's like a proper sale so that one could be really useful as well okay so now we've done that we're going to start the game i'm going to go straight in there and i'm going to do what i said i was going to do which is going to change up this red card so in order to um buy this i can either pay three money or i can banish a stock card from your hand so if i just get rid of this one i've basically bumped it up to to buy two quality so that one's going to go into the banish parlor which i'll kind of leave I guess I'll leave off screen because it's distracting. Um, and then there we go. So in a normal game, it'd be other players turn now and they do something, but it's no turns like that. So what I should be doing right now is trying my best to get my hand in as good a position as possible because um, otherwise this uh, Vendatron is going to be able to get all of the adventurers. Probably not, but yeah. I think Samuel um, Soots is a good one as well because if I can get him in, if anyone uh, buy, if he gets any of these stuff, uh, sorry, the adventurers that I want, I can use that to sort of coax them back later on. So I'm going to hire Samuel Soots. He's on call, so I could use him straight away if I want, but I will not. Um, so instead, I'm going to spend three money to hire him, and that money goes into the supply there. Remember, I said that um, the, the Vendatron doesn't have gold. So anytime Vendratron sells to an adventurer, they won't actually get gold. They'll just take the card itself. So yeah, um, but I obviously still have to pay and, uh, and, and gain gold. So yeah, uh, that's Simon Hired. Um, that one might be nice. It is only two, um, and that one also could be quite nice. But I really think that um, looking at their hand right now, um, getting a green card would be nice. So maybe I should do that. Uh, or I could use this immediately then. I can just see what's under here. It might be a better card. So yeah, actually, let's do that. I'm going to spend two, two money on this, the Bonsai of Knowledge. And again, this is... Uh, maybe I'll put this in... Up, maybe the, this this one there, so it's out of the way. And then I can maybe put the um, put my fixtures and staff over here and my hand over here. Okay. And actually, my stock uh, pile should be over there as well. Okay, so I'm going to do that, I think. Um, I'm going to now use this. I'm going to use this. So I flip it over. I'm going to look at what's on the next card up. So we'll see what's up available. Okay, so we've got a blue card. Again, I am going to win, I think, a blue card but because I have more blue. But just depends, obviously, if it's blue and red, for example, they, they, they could win it out, out from under my nose. But that one is not worth paying four more because it's a three one. And I may as well just pay three for that. So that's fine. I flipped over the uh, the fixture card because obviously that means um, 
that means that I don't get to use that again this turn, but I will reactivate that at the end of the round so I can use it next round for free. So yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so um, do I want to buy anything else? I've got five money. I can only buy one more thing, but I could buy something, potentially win the custom, and then use the money I've got to buy the remaining stuff. So I think actually I will buy um, the, 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 the dragon roll. Um, this one, by the way, has a little star symbol on the top right of it. That means it's a unique card. Any other card that has that is not unique. There are multiple copies of it in the deck. But this one is unique. It is actually worth one more if you sell it. So that one is better. So I'm going to buy that for three. So get rid of that and get two money back from the from the bank. And there we go. Uh, so actually, let's start selling. Let's let's get this whole thing in... Um, in, in Let's just show off an, an adventure sale. So I'm going to reveal this card. Okay, so we've got the thief. Okay, so the annoying thing is... Uh, the, uh, the, the thief is a type of guild, so you see on the top left, that's a type of guild. There are four types of guild, we've got rangers, mages, fighters, which are represented by the colours here, and thieves. Um, some adventurers will score, or, uh, will, will score based on other, um, adventurers in your ledger with a specific, um, uh, guild. So this one doesn't, but it, there may be cards that are affected by how many thieves you have. He's only got four money to, to you know, sell, uh, spend in the shop. So actually, if I sold um, this card, for example, I would actually lose money. I wouldn't be able to get four out of him instead of six. So it's a, another thing to consider. Uh, Richard said, oh, uh, Ross is here. Hi, Ross. Uh, spend that money to make that money. Exactly. That's uh, cool. That's uh, capitalism, right? Uh, so Richard said, interesting stories of the game. It was designed by DigiSprite, an excellent Scottish tabletop company who took it to Kickstarter and it was doing good on funding. The campaign was running during UK Games Expo and that's where they met Hub Games and the game got signed. After that, they had to cancel the campaign. Interesting. I've been keeping an eye on it ever since. Love the art in it. That's... Uh, that's interesting. I didn't know Digi Spite was Scottish, and I had no idea about that story. So that's actually quite quite cool. Um, how much money did they get? I mean, I assume they wouldn't have cancelled the campaign unless Hub Games were offering them more. Um, but yeah, that's certainly interesting, and thank you for that. I'm sure that's actually been really um, enlightening for some people in this chat. You know, especially me. I don't tend to um, to follow um, uh, what you call it. Uh, Kickstarter campaigns as much, so I would not have known. I mean, I probably would have seen it and been like, okay, you know what? Um, uh, I possibly um, would have. I don't know what I'm talking about. You're such a gossip. Yes, no, that's totally fine. It's it's board game industry gossip, which is different than just gossiping about person. Anyway, so we've revealed this, and it's got a react thing, and it says, when revealed, the manager with the busiest store flips face down their highest cost fixture. If you cannot lose two. Now, in the case of a tie, I believe. There is rules for that. I'm going to check the solo rules first because I think that this one doesn't count towards these. I think thieves are always going to target me um, because they don't have money. Um, I think it's, there's a specific thing in the rule. Uh, let's have a look. It says, yeah, uh, if the Vendatron doesn't ever have any gold, am I always the richest, busiest store? Yes, thieves will always target you. So I'm going to um, flip down my highest card fixture, which, um, ooh, I mean, I should probably flip down red because I'm not going to win that anyway, right? Um, annoyingly, I, I, yeah, so I flip that down, um, is that right? The manager with the busiest store flips face down their highest cost fixture. Oh, so I don't have a fixture. Lucky I used it. Although actually in this sense, I'm kind of annoyed that I lost it because I would have happily forego foregone that. Uh, but instead I have to lose two money. Um, so yeah, that's that. Now we're going to start the selling. Um, Thief has, uh, two symbols, a blue and a green, so you're going to get rid of their, it's going to offer their bit best green, which is this one, and their best blue, which is this one, for a total of six plus one for the initiative, so seven, I've got to outbid seven, they take blue and green, I could get this, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, I could win with eight, but I think, is it worth it for only four money, I'm going to lose so much money there, so I think I'm going to let, um, Vendatron win this one. So, yeah, so they're going to keep the, this card because they never get rid of the purple cards. Then I'm going to um, dis to banish that because they have sold it. But they did get a total of four money, which obviously doesn't happen. But they also, more importantly, got this in their ledger. So I'm going to put this... Uh, where can where can I put this? Um, what's your newest gossip? My neighbor forgot to bring their laundry in and it was there all night. Did it rain, though? No. That's what I want to know. Um, <laughs> I don't have any gossip, unfortunately. I'm just trying to think. Um, not even like jokey gossip. That's not really gossip at all. Uh, maybe I'll think of something funny on the way. 
Oh, you know what? I didn't start recording this. Oh no, I'm devastated. Oh, I can show. I'm sure I can download it from uh, Twitch, whatever. But I'm devastated every time. Not the point, Russ. Not the point. <laughs> well, fair enough. I'm gutted. Actually, I didn't start recording this. Uh, Ross, I don't suppose you know if you can, um, if you can download. Oh, streams straight from Twitch. Okay, that's good. Does hot Ross summer count as gossip? <laughs> Um, yes, always, always and, and always and forever. Uh, okay, so now I don't have any money, so I can't buy anything, so I may as well just go straight into this. However, because um, he, the Vendatron, I say he, but it's going to be they, because they used their card to bid for that, they've got no more green cards, so I have a good potential um, opportunity here to win this one as long as it's one screen. Oh! One second, we forgot something. We forgot something, I don't think it would have mattered, but remember that um, the thief had a, um, a blue thing as well. So actually what they would have done is they would also um, used their blue thing to offer as well. And again, that would have meant I was definitely not gonna outbid. Um, oh wait, hang on, they, had a, they, had a, they used their blue and this. So it would have been four and four, eight, nine. So they would have, they, yeah, it would have been nine in total, but they would have been able to offer another blue thing, but they couldn't. So in that case, um, they would have just still bid that, but uh, they, yeah, so I don't think much changed there. Why is the red one there? Uh, did I, did I miss, oh, that, that one's banished because, okay, fine. <laughs> okay, so I think it's fine. Um, in video producer, click the three little dots and you can download or export directly to YouTube. Thank you very much, because that, saved my life because I do have a recordability on here um, because obviously there's an issue potentially with sometimes you can um, uh, have issues with um, uh, uh, quality of video whereas if you record it directly to your computer I think it's slightly better but it's fine I think this one's going to go well thank you for that I'm feeling very pleased I'll just have to remember to download it afterwards okay carrying on with the game so I'm yeah I think that doesn't affect things hugely but I gotta remember about this uh, daily bulletin so let's just do the next adventure card because I can't do anything else and funnily enough I can use Samwell if I wanted to to bring um, the swindler back to back into the game so yeah let's just shift this over and we'll put the adventurer and um, the ledger down there on the right hand side um, uh, in trying to persuade Ross to send me his curly locks so I can make a pillow mm, make sure he washes his hair first though because um, that would be pretty hard to wash hair um, that's been cut. That's what I'm saying. Uh, okay, so we've got the Boulder Guild Champion. Okay, so Boulder Guild Champion. I don't think I'm going to win this because look how many red symbols they've got on there. Um, it says, after checkout, give all other managers two money from the supply. So even if I lose this, I'm still going to... Um, I'm still going to get some money, which is not enough to do anything here. But uh, hey, you know what? It's something. So he's a fighter. And remembering the rules, um, we've got two red and two blue because of the daily bulletin. So this is Guild... A Vendatron, they're going to offer um, two red and two blue items. Okay, so they have this one, obviously, is going to go first. This one, obviously, going to go as well. And they're going to use a blue item as well. But they haven't got the extra blue item. So they're actually going to offer, and this, let's, let's calculate this out, shall we? So reds are doubled and blues are doubled. So we've got five, six, seven, eight times two, 16. And then we've got two times uh, two, which is tw four. So 20 plus one, 21. So I have to outbid 21. Can I do that? Do I even want to? Eight money is a lot, an adventure would be good, but actually I'm just thinking maybe I don't want to do that. So let's count up anyway, because remember, I can offer as many items as I want. The Vendatron is the only one that can only offer one item per symbol. So I've got three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Yeah, so I'm out of this anyway. I'm completely screwed. Uh, so yeah, Vendatron wins again. Good for you, Vendatron. Um, however, at least something comes from this. They're going to get rid of those cards. So now the next um, round or the next adventurer that uh, that 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 goes on sale. Um, oh, I only get two money from the the guild, uh, the 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 ability on the bottom of that card as well. But now they've only got these cards to ability. I show this one as well because Corium Short Sword. Um, this one um, has an ability which is a little star uh, so stars and then a little plus symbol above it. What that means is this quality can be affected by the ability. So while it's worth two now, it could be worth more. So let's have a look. Uh, it says ongoing epic quality. Whilst being sold, this stock 
has plus one for each other sock you're selling. So if the if they were selling like three other cards, this would actually be worth five stars in quality because of those three stars will be added to this. So that's pretty good. Um, yeah, so it's not great because it does mean that if they have another lots of symbols on this one, then I'm screwed. Um, by the way, I should also say that if you don't use your staff members, so if I don't use um, Samuel, I'm not going to have to banish him. Only after he's banished do I have to then at the end of the round hire him back. So yeah. Okay, so I mean, again, got two money, can't do anything useful, so let's just reveal the new adventurer. We've got a Zethar, the Abyss Walker, and I think I've got this one. They've only got four money, right? Um, after checkout, they say, um, gain a fixture, staff, or stock of your choice from the Abyss. Well, 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 look what we have here. We've got a five-star quality item. Um, and we have a four star quality item, but obviously I'm going to go for the red one. So we need to win this one. Um, so again, Vendatron starts and they're going to offer one for the for the uh, thingy card. We've got a red symbol and we've got two blue symbols, but luckily they only have one blue card. So this is going to be worth uh, two plus one for this card. So that's three plus one for that. So four and then double the blue. So it's actually going to be eight total. So eight money. So we need to just beat eight, and if we do, we've won. Um, so, and that also because this one's only got four money, I actually don't want to spend loads of it. And in fact, it might be more beneficial for me to keep a card that's a really high value um, if possible. Well, actually, that one's gonna be fine. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna choose to offer this one, obviously. So that's gonna be three. Um, then I'm gonna add it so I beat eight. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah, so three. Um, and these are doubled because of the because of the daily bulletin. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there we go. That's what I'm offering. And because it's the highest bid and Vendatron can't outbid, um, I'm going to win this. I discard these. So these are going to go on my discard pile or my reorder pile. And I win this. Now, the total of this um, money that I'm selling is actually eight. But because I was so desperate for custom and I offered him a really good deal and he's only got four money to spend, I just get four money, but still, that's something. So I'll take a five and put a one back, and then that's um, that's that. Now everybody gets one more turn, I believe, uh, in the normal game, but in the solo game, uh, uh, let's check trading hours. Uh, yeah, it says um, at the end of the day. So it doesn't say specifically um, about this. So I'm assuming it's the same deal. I can get one more go. Okay, so I'm going to do one more go. Oh, uh, this one comes to me. After checkout, gain a fixture staff or stock of your choice from the Abyss. I'll take this, thank you very much. So Mura, Mura Massa Blade comes to me. Look how much that's worth. It's worth eight gold. If I sell that, that is a bad ass item to own. Uh, so that's going to go into my hand. Um, gain a fixture, yeah, so that's it. I just gain that. Um, that. In fact, that was the best option. I have an easy choice there. Um, so I'm more competitive now when it comes to red items. So... Uh, I get one more turn. Shall I spend this six money or shall I see what else is on offer later on? Um, I don't particularly want any of those, to be honest. Um, that one could be good if I wanted to m manipulate my hand some more. Um, there's also, by the way, a limit. I didn't say this, but there's a limit to the number of these cards you can have. And that's four total mix and match. So I can have four green, three green, one yellow, two green, two yellow, etc. Um, if I gain the fifth... I have to discard one of my other ones. And generally that'd be good to do it if you want to get rid of a face down something because you've used it and you can still potentially use the new one that you've got that turn. So um, let us carry on. So I've taken my last turn and you know what? I don't really want anything. I think like good, it's good to have stock, right? But at the end of the day, I don't think I want to use this. I don't want to do anything. So I think I'm just gonna call it. So the end of the day occurs, and there are some rules for this. I'm just going to make sure I'm doing this right in the thing. You may choose to keep a single card in your hand and discard the rest to your reorder pile. Well, I'm definitely keeping the Muramasa Blade, um, so that keeps... Um, this one, by the way, should have got discarded or banished, sorry. Um, meaning that they don't get any stock items, but they... Oh, no. They didn't, they didn't lose that, so they do get to keep that. Sorry. So there we go. That goes there. Um, these ones stay here. These ones stay here. This one comes to me and my, my uh, ledger. Uh, I'm going to get rid of these cards. These are discarded. I'm going to keep this one. Next up, we've got the upkeep phase. Flip up, face up any fixture cards that are face down. There we go. Um, face down cards can be flipped up by paying the higher cost. Well, we're not going to do that because we don't need to. 
Um, clean up, all remaining face-up stock, fixture and staff cards are banished to the abyss. So these ones all go into the abyss. Sorry, um, Blue, Sent Blue Mountain Sentinel, but uh, your CV was not good enough. Uh, hi, Robin. Um, oh, so not yet again. So at the end of the game, Vendatron's points that you're trying to beat are the total money symbols on the adventures it wins. Yes. Um, I will double check that because uh, uh, it does say here, actually. Sorry. Um, yeah, so at the end, add up the purse values of all adventurers. Yes, that's correct. So that's what they'll get. Robin, um, hi there. Thanks for checking out the solo mode. Robin from Digispite. That's so nice. Um, I was really glad that you guys released that, to be honest, because I, I don't know if you caught it earlier on in the stream, but I was saying um, what I really like um, is the game, and I was sad that I you know, didn't have a solo mode, but then I was thinking about the gameplay, and I was like, yeah, of course there's not going to be a solo mode, because it's a you know bidding auction game, and there was no like cards that I felt could um, qualify for this, and then you released it, and I was like, oh, it kind of works, actually, um, so thank you, and um, yeah, if there's anything I'm doing wrong, feel free to jump in and say, because I'm more than happy to, uh, to correct it, because I don't want to be giving people the wrong, um, wrong idea here, but so far, I'm really enjoying it. And as, as you saw, I gave a review um, on the website, which, you know, I, I feel was a very positive review. So, yeah, thank you for making such an awesome game. And, uh, in fact, if you wanted to um, shout out to yourself, I'll, I'll, I'll say uh, if you, if you want to shout out to, you know, like a Twitter account or a new game or campaign that you're doing, um, really keen to hear. So, um, yeah. So, now we've kept that. The next thing we'll do is we'll do the next um, setup phase. Uh, banish as the current face-up daily card. Once all three steps are complete, begin a new day. Any basic stock? Yes, that's fine. So luckily, there's nothing... Well, there's only one to add there. So now we go back up to the beginning again because uh, I want to make sure there's different numbers of cards that you deal out for the Vendatron so they get stronger as the game goes on. Okay, so we reveal the daily bulletin. Uh, so I'm going to get rid of that one on the bottom and we'll see what the new daily bulletin is. So... <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> Ari, regarding the call to arms... The guilds are nearing the final floors of the dungeon. Adventurers will be purchasing additional weapons and armor to prepare for the final descent. This day, each adventurer desires martial stock in addition to the stock types on their card. So it's exactly the same as last time, just a different colored symbol. So everything's going to have an extra red symbol. So what I really don't want to see is lots of red stock cards in the Vendatron's thing. But I have... I have a, a trick up my sleeve, or rather a Muramasa blade up my sleeve, so uh, that's quite good. Um, I don't know if, if I was supposed to draw my cards at the end of the turn, I think I was, yeah. So I have to draw up to the, well, the remaining four cards. Um, hey, at least there's some two stock cards in here, that's something. So this is my hand, um, there's no special abilities, these are just basic cards, and my other card is just a regular one. Um, Robin says, that's great to hear, and your review was brilliant, really appreciate you putting it together. If anyone does want to follow us, we're Team Digispite on Twitter, so there you go. You can actually see that in the chat anyway, so yeah, feel free to follow them on Twitter, um, and uh, you can find out all about their upcoming games. But again, thank you for checking this out, and uh, yeah, I'm really enjoying it so far, so hopefully... People are watching and uh, enjoying it as well. Cool. Okay, so let's get cracking on with the next round. Uh, we're going to reveal, reveal four, five cards um, for this uh, Vendatron. So let's see what they're playing with this time. Okay, so basically I'm not getting any blue this time, which is actually quite nice. That would have been better for them last turn, or worse for me, I should say. But so far, that's not terrible. So here's what I'm going to do. I Hopefully you can see all of those cards. Uh, so there we go. So this is they've got a, a Dagger of Mammon. Uh, Ma Magmite Bullock, uh, the Dagger of Mammon basically, if you, you have that in your hand, you can use that card, discarding it, to gain three money, and then, dis oh yeah, so, yeah, it says discard the card, but you just gain three money, so if you don't think you're going to win a bid, you can actually use a turn to just, you know, I'll just turn it into money, and as you can see, it's got money in the blade, which is actually quite a nice little feature there, um, so there we go, uh, we've got the on Oni o Onigiri, Oni, Oni Onigiri, I think I got that right, um, which is just a straight up, just regular card. Got mana bean coffee. Now, if you if you use this during the selling phase, so when you're sort of bidding, it says each manager discards the highest quality stock they are selling. So basically, if I have this in my hand, I can use this um, when I'm selling and go right. Everybody, including the player who plays it, discards the highest quality stock card, which is actually quite um, quite brutal, especially if you are the last player to act in a bidding phase, because then basically um, they have to get rid of it. So it's quite nice. Um, and you can then see what you're up against. So it's a kind of a mean card, but yeah. And then we've got another copy of that, um, and that's it. So now we're going to reveal three cards from the stock. Uh, so we've got Forge Steamed Buns, 
which is a green card of three quality. We've got Corium Short Sword, which I think we already looked at earlier on in the game. So basically just adds um, quality for more stock you sell. And then we've got the Hungry Soul Blade. So this one, I think I used this one before. It's quite mean. Let me explain. So this one is a soul sacrifice, and you use this as a separate action. It says banish a staff card in your store. So I literally get rid of them. You can see where this is going. They are no longer with us. Um... But you look at the top three cards of the stock deck, which is this here. You get to add one to your hand and banish the rest. So basically what you're doing is you're turning in a person's life into like an item. So <laughs> it's quite mean, but uh, that's the game. Uh, okay, so you've got the fixture. We've got the auto forge, which actually I don't think I've seen this one in the game before. Um, pay one less when buying martial stock. So if I want to buy red cards, I can pay one less for them, which is quite neat. And we've got the public scrying pool, which you use this as an action. It says, look at the top three cards of your storeroom, which is your, your deck. Um, you may add one to your hand or banish one to the abyss. So you can either get rid of a bad card out of your deck or you can add a good card to your hand and then you return the rest to the top of your storeroom. So they're still going to be there next time, which is quite nice. Then we've got the um, Miska, store cleric. She's a unique um, character. Look how cute. Look how cute she is. Um, she, uh, I, I assume it's a she, but it could be a they or a he. Uh, react. At the start of your turn, you may flip face up a staff or fixture card in your store. Ah, so that one's quite nice. That one means you can reuse stuff, but obviously it takes up one of the four slots. So that's quite a nice card. And then we've got Stock Rat. Um, you can use them to draw two cards from your storeroom and flip them. So that's a nice way to draw them. Yes, the artwork is amazing. If you want to, if you want me to, like close up on any of them just just kind of tell me where it is and i will go up because look the stock right is just so cute i just like the cap please tell me robin that you sell those caps because uh i could generally see myself wearing one of those i just like the idea of just wearing it no only board gamers will know it um it's like this only 90s kids will understand this and it's like only players of adventure mark will will get this reference anyway uh, and then we draw three adventurers into the queue. So let's just do this and we'll just reveal them one at a time. That's a great merch idea. Well, I mean, can I, as long as I can get commission now. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, okay, so uh, let's have a look at what we've got. Six money. Um, I don't want to wait too long before starting a sale. Uh, the only thing is that my hand is not so good. Um, they were only going to get blue, but I'm a real advantage with red cards here. So what I could do, actually, is I could use Samuel Soots to just start a sale to this one because I know I'm going to win it. Because look at that, it's going to have, it's basically going to have three red and one blue. You know what? That seems like a pretty neat idea. And then I'll have loads of money to spend and add to my hand. So let's try. Uh, so I'm going to use Samuel Soots. So choose an adventurer in any manager's ledger, add it to the venture queue and begin selling to them. Done. Hopefully this will not backfire on me. But yeah, the boulder guild champion he's uh he he went adventuring and it turns out that he um basically broke all of the stuff that he bought because vendatron sells really shoddy merchandise i didn't say that i didn't say that it's um just fact i'm not liable libeling myself but yeah boulder came back and he's like oh i need more stuff so here we go boulder um uh vendatron bids first so he's got two red got one red item there that's all they can offer uh, and then they've got, um, so this is their offer, and then they're going to get one blue item. Their highest value blue item is this one. So they're actually going to get uh, a total of four um, times two, two, so eight plus one, nine. So I have to beat nine. I have to beat nine, and I can do that with one card and maximize efficiency as well. Look at this. I'm offering, he's offering what? A Magnite Bullock and a Handy Hatchet, and I'm like, mate. Just take this Muramasa Blade, that's all you need. And he's like, sold, because that's double, so it's 10. So yeah, I get that. Uh, this is going to be so, uh, this is going to be actually just discarded. And look at that, because he's got eight money. Um, oh, thank you, Robin. Thank you very much for following. That's very kind. Uh, uh, so now you can watch any other um, streams I do in the future. <laughs> so I get that, and it's got eight money. So I'm going to take eight money from the bank. Uh, here we go. And now I have a total of 14 bucks. And remember, money is point in this game. So if I keep spending it, I mean, it's not too bad when you're buying these things, actually, because they will actually be worth the number of points. It's like banking points, I guess. But obviously, having lots of money as well is good because it means more points at the end of the game. All right, so uh, that's done. Obviously, we'll come here. After checkout, give all of the managers two money from the supply. Well, Vendatron doesn't have that, so that's fine. That's probably the best thing that could happen there. Eight money, got rid of one card. Uh, they get that back now, I presume. Oh, let's put it the right way around. 
And uh, yeah, so they had a horrible time there, but they're probably going to win all of the other ones, so that's fine. But now I can start spending this money. And in fact, there's no reason why I shouldn't buy some of this stuff here. In fact, this red one will pair nicely with the other one because it'll actually bump up the quality um, depending on what I sell. And it's red cards are in today, are in this. Uh, they're, worth, they're worth an extra. So yeah, um, wait, was that, was that was actually triple, wasn't it? So actually, I really overbid for that. Yeah, because that ha has an extra red on it. And actually, that would have meant they had two, four, six. No, uh, sorry, they 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 bid um, two, four, six. Oh, I would have still won anyway. It's fine. I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, that would have still won. I think I'll buy the Corium short sword because I don't have a sword in my um, my thing now. So yeah, I'm going to buy that for two. So that's it, two for that. Um, again, I can take as many tins as I want. So do I want anything else? Well, let's look at these. Do I want to buy? Oh, actually, let's take that back. Hang on, hold up, hold up. Get my two money back. Let's buy um, the Auto Forge. How's that? So I'll buy the Auto Forge because look what the Auto Forge does. Um, lets you pay one less when buying red stock. And look, there's two red stock in there. So actually, I'm going to spend one money on this because it's an ongoing ability. So we'll take the Corium Short Sword. We're going to spend two money on this. Why not? Literally just keep spending all of the red things. Um, and this one, when I use it, which I could use it right now, to banish a stock, staff card from my store, I can be like, buy, and then I can just take a good card from here. So, um, yeah, that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. Let's just slide this over. Do I want to hire any staff members? Um, I've got a load of money. Did you have to spend money for the auto forge fixture? Did, I think I did, though. Did I? Oh, maybe I didn't. Oh, maybe I didn't. I started off with 14. Yes. No, you're right. So, yeah, thank you for that. Thank you for keeping me straight on the straight and narrow. Um, thank you for that. I should have spent money. But I've already made that money back. So I spent two on it and it saved me two money. So it's paid for itself already. Thank you, not yet again. <laughs> I'm, I, what would they do without you? I'd probably just win by cheating all of the games. Uh, okay, so there we go. Do I want to buy anything else? I've got a decent size of red cards now, which is perfect for today. But I see if any blue cards come up, I'm screwed. Um, okay. Do I want to buy those steamed buns maybe? I mean, it could be good, but I don't want to clog up my hand with stuff. Um, the scrying pool lets me look at top three cards. I may do the scrying pool, but then I'll have, like, too many cards, I guess. Um, you know what? Do you know what? I probably shouldn't do this, but I'm going to do the soul blade. No. No, I'm not going to do it now. Just trying to be a good Vendatron assistant. You are doing a great job at Vendatron um, assistant, so they are very pleased they hired you. You just kind of hope they, they don't soul blade sacrifice you. Um, so, uh, just thinking, do I want to buy anything else? I've only got four slots, you see, so if I buy something from here, it'll be my last slot, and then I have to start getting rid of stuff, but, um, I'm not really feeling that one, um, that one could be good at, like, that one could be really good for that, actually, but then I'd have to keep paying that, um, so it's like three, yeah, so it's kind of just, I don't know, I don't, yeah, I, I think I'll take, um, I think I'll take this one. Because I think this one could be really good. And it could allow me to um, see what I've got coming up, I guess. Uh, oh, I should have said, by the way. <clears throat> at the end of the game, fixtures will count um, towards your total score. But staff won't. So you will... If you get um, if you get staff, they only uh, use their abilities. And then with nothing at the end of the game. So just bear that in mind if you are playing this yourself. Okay. Um, maybe I'll just take... Maybe I'll just take the Forge Steamed Buns. Let's just do it. So that's going to cost me three money. Uh, three money. Done. And let's just sell to an adventurer. I don't think I need any of those. I think I've got a good green and red hand. So let's see what we've got. Okay, so we've got a thief. Oh, no. Oh, no. This is very bad for me because I've just realized um, thieves always target me. And when revealed, the richest manager gives four money. So I have to give away four of my money. If only I'd spent more money. This has gone wrong twice now. Um, I, I had to get rid of money because I used my fixture and I have to get rid of money because I still had money uh, Anyway, and I, I know what's gonna happen here. Obviously, they're gonna well, we'll see we might uh, this one's worth eight money So one might be worth trying to keep them um, So well anyway react when revealed finally we've resolved that and look at this by the way the artwork on this is so cute Robin Hart um, is just little like a stag or deer with earrings and just the cutest little face. So yeah, uh, it's one of each plus one plus red. So actually I could win this if I play this right. Um, so Robin Hart's gonna reveal, so they've got two um, they got two red items to, to give, which they only have one. So there we go, they're gonna offer this. 
then they're going to offer a blue item. Their best blue item is over here. So they'll offer that. And then they're going to give their best green item, which is this one here. Now, red items are doubled. So it's going to be 2, 4, plus 4, 8, plus 3, 11, plus 1, 12. So I need to beat 12. And I think I can do that. Remember, reds are doubled. So if I um, offered uh, this one, for example. Wait, I haven't used that yet. No, I, I'm wondering if I should keep that maybe. If I offered this and then I added this and this maybe. How much is that? That's going to be 2 plus 1, 3 plus 4 times 2, 8, 9, 10, 11. So I need two, I need two more. I could, get, I could use this, I guess. I could use this green one. Um, and maybe keep some red ones for later. So I could win with that. Uh, I wonder if it's worth it though. I'm going to lose four money. Um, I'm going to lose four money from that. But I think it might be worth it to get that and get some money back. I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to sell all of these. And you know, I could still win with red items, potentially. So yeah, let's, let's do that. Uh, let's see if there's a better way I can do this actually. I need 12 and reds are doubled. So that's four. That's uh, six, that's six, uh, that's seven, that's seven, um, and that would be eight, not, oh, this could be better actually. Let me just check this. This is worth, um, this could be worth five. I think this is gonna be better for me if I do this actually. If I, if I sold that, that would be worth five times two, or maybe I could even get rid of one. So that'd be worth four, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So I think that's better. Let's do that. Okay, sorry about that. Just a bit confusing there. But I'm going to sell those because that one makes it into a 4 because it's got two others. So that's 4 times 2, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So I'm going to sell those. And that's worth 7 money, actually. <laughs> so if I just added something else in, I could get more money. But I think for the sake of keeping... You know what? Let's do it. Let's just sell all of those um, so I can get the most value from this. I'm going to get 8 money from that. There we go. 8 money. So I've, I've basically gained four, but I did stop the, um, I stopped them from stealing the, the thief uh, from me. So I get eight, I get, so I got eight money. The only cards I've got left in my hand now are these, but unfortunately that does mean that these cards go back into Vendatron's hand. And so they might have a lot of money at the end of it. So yeah, that's probably not the best, but we'll see. Um, do I want to buy anything else now? I want to say, let's use this. Let's use this. Let's see what stock we've got. Oh, I can't because I've, um, I've already looked at that. Maybe I'll just look at the um, maybe I'll just look at the staff staff card and see what's there. Might be worth four money. Uh, so I use this. So I flip that over, and it's a red mountain bard. Add to a sale to gain plus seven quality until the end of checkout. Then banish this card. So that's like a super boost, a one-off super boost. So that could be really good. Three money, or technically four, because I'm buying it from the top. Um, we know that's going to come out anyway. So let's just hold off for that for now. I don't know if it's going to be worth it. To gain three, well, could be. Do I want to spend four money on it? I feel like, I feel like, yeah. Let's 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 buy it. No, I think he's going to come out. We can buy him next to in a slight cheap. I don't think I'm going to win necessarily because I'm going to have like six if I get a double. But it could be a good red card. What I'm hoping for is a blue adventure, just so they can burn a lot of blue cards from their hand. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to buy anything. Let's just reveal the next adventure. Okay, so we've got. Oh dear, losing more money. The thieves are all coming up at the beginning. I swear I shuffled these cards. But the high woman, um, when revealed, the manager with the busiest store, which is always going to be me, uh, loses, flips down their highest cost staff card, which I don't, and if they can't, they lose two money. So basically, this round, I've gained two money. Um, or actually, I've lost because I spent that. But yeah, generally, that's uh, quite frustrating. However, they've got two red um, they've got two red ability, uh, sorry, two red demand. So here, um, Vendatron's going to offer this. Um, they're going to offer one blue card, their best one, which is this one. And then they're going to have this. So this is worth double because of the daily bulletin. So that's four, eight, nine. Can I beat nine? I can do three, six, seven, eight. Oh, he doesn't want that card. So actually, the best I can do is this. So yeah, I'm not going to win this one. Um, that one goes back. This one goes into the abyss. And this one goes back back here and um, that adventurer card goes to them. There we go. Okay, so do I want to go and try and get another one? Um, maybe. Uh, do I want to buy something else? I seem to be losing money at a horrible rate. Well, three three thieves have come out out of five adventurers so far, so that's really, uh, that really sucks. But do I want to just go straight in with another adventurer? Is there anything here that might be nice? 
Um, that one would be good, but it's going to cost me three money just to get two extra cards that I don't think I'm going to win anyway. Um, or I could get that one, which might be nice. And, I, and, I, and it's worth money at the end of the game, and it would allow me potentially to get rid of bad cards from my hand. You know what? Let's buy this. I'm buying the public scrying pool. Let me just check if you can see that on the camera. Uh, you can. In fact, my camera has sort of like slid around a little bit. So let me just try and fix that for you guys. There we go. You can see it a little bit better now. Uh, hopefully, anyway. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to use this uh, right now, because why not? So look at the top three cards of your storeroom. So I need to create a storeroom first. Um, how are you guys doing, by the way? Are you guys alright? If you have any questions, um, just checking, uh, ooh, just checking, uh, Twitter while I'm shuffling, um, just to see if anyone's, oh, okay, okay, cool. lots of tweets, alright, I better check on those later anyway. <laughs> I guess this, that's why I've got so, some viewers, it's because, uh, thankfully Hub Games and DigiSprite retweeted. Lovely, thank you very much. You guys are actually really good, um, in terms of, um, sharing, uh, content by creators like myself. I've always kind of admired that um, you do actually do that. Um, so thank you for that. I think everybody who's ever covered any of your products has been really appreciative of the ability to share. I know Paul Grogan has um, kind of had issues with people when he creates content and it just doesn't get shared out before, um, which is always a frustrating thing. Uh, so thank you. Uh, anyway, so uh, that's it. That's shuffled enough. So I'm going to use that card. It says, look at the top three cards. I can either add one to my hand or banish one. So do I want to add one of these cards in, or do I want to banish? Now, given the fact that uh, red cards are in, are in vogue right now, it might be worth adding this one in, but I could also just get rid of a, a bad card, meaning I'm more likely to draw the cards that I want. So what do you think, uh, chat? One, vote one for um, keeping this card, uh, vote two for getting rid of that card. I don't know if anyone's actually gonna gonna chat, but we'll see. That's very kind of you and nice to hear. Absolutely, if people are creating content for our things, it's the least we can do. Well, I, I, yes, totally. And even in reviews um, as well. And I think there's obviously, it's kind of, I, I can understand it must be from like a publisher or a creating a uh, uh, game designer's point of view. It must be hard to have that balance of like, do I want to share a review that has like, uh, kind of criticism of the game in it. Uh, but I think it's actually important, you know? Uh, okay, so I'm going to make the decision there because you guys are being quiet, which is totally fine, by the way. I love just watching. That's enough, just so you get a sense of the game. But I think based on the fact I'm going to just take... I'm going to take this one. I'm going to take this one. It might come in handy. We might min we might win an adventure out of it, and that's that's worth it for me. So let's do that. Um, I'm going to take that, and hopefully... Um, that. Well, well, we've got nothing else to do now. So flip that card so that one goes back in, and... Uh, I think what I'm going to do is we're going to just reveal the last adventure and see what happens. I can always buy something afterwards if I want. Okay, so this is actually perfect because if you look, two reds because of this and a green react. After checkout, you may not make an offer to the next adventure revealed this day. That means the next player to reveal is this instant win for the other player. Um, so based on the fact that it's two red and one green, let's see what, uh, this has been a very bad round for them, but they are gonna get a load of these cards in their ledger, so it might be not terrible. So they're gonna offer this for the red, nothing for the other red, and their best green is this one. <laughs> no, technically it's this one. Um, they're gonna get double for the red, so that's four, plus three, seven, plus one, eight. So I need to be eight. I think I can do this. I can be easily do it. I've got double, I can do it with these two. Um, I could use this now, actually. Do I want to spend money to hire back Samwell Soots? I think I might keep them, because if they get a really good card, I can hire them back. So actually, I think I'm going to bid with... Wait, so they got eight, right? So I need to beat eight. So three, four, five. Uh, oh, yeah, let's just do this. Six, seven, eight, nine. And in fact, let's keep this one in our hand. Uh, no, actually, let's keep the let's keep the green one in our hand. So let's basically sell... Um, oh, actually, I can only sell, I can sell with just these two, I think. Three, six, seven, eight. Yes, three, six, nine, twelve. Let's just do both of those, and I'll keep the green one in my hand. So there we go. I sell that. I outbid, so yeah, you get to keep those cards, and uh, I will sell these two, which is eight, but obviously they only have seven money on them, so I'm going to let them uh, get a good discount. But I get seven money, which is great. So seven money. Uh, here we go. 
uh, that puts me at 15. And I will now keep this card in my hand because we've reached the end. I'll keep this in my ledger. Um, and I can't make an offer on the next adventure re reveal this day. Oh no, there's no more adventurers. How unfortunate. <laughs> How very fortunate for me. That round was very good for me. Considering, look, I was definitely going to lose any cards with uh, blue, blue symbols in it you'd think, but actually I survived. Thankfully, I had the good red cards and red was the sort of thing of the day. So that's the end of the round. Uh, we will now wrap up by me keeping one of these cards, well obviously that one, and then drawing back up to five from our stock room. So we're gonna do one, two, three, four, five. There we go. So actually, I've got the Muramasa blade back in stock, uh, which is great. Uh, these flip over, and yes, I will be hiring Samuel back because he was very good in that last round. So Samuel comes back on payroll, and now this is my uh, this is my setup going into day three. So what we'll do first, uh, we'll get all of these cards. I think will go into uh, their ledger over here. So they're actually going to add twelve points to their total, which is pretty good. Not going to lie. Uh, actually, do you know what? Let's do a separate pile for. Um, for them on their items and separate cards for there. So actually they're doing all right, but we'll see. I don't know if I'm gonna win, we shall see. Uh, yes, yeah, so then we reveal the next um, daily bulletin. Daily bulletin. Regarding the guild initiation day, guild members are taking a break from the dun dungeon's depths to celebrate a new batch of members entering the fold. Expect increased foot traffic in town. We deal one additional adventurer into the adventurer queue this day. So this means I'll reveal four from here. One two, three, and four. So we've got four adventurers, okay, fine. These are discarded, by the way, or banished, I should say. And then we reveal three stock cards from here. Oh, actually, first, I think we add six cards um, into the Vendatron's hand, yes. So six stock for Vendatron today. So let's have a look what they've got. They've got the Idol of Tlox, which is cute, by the way. It's obviously an axolotl inspired with three eyes. I think it just reminds me of that um, reaction video of the axol uh, axolotl, which is just like a food drops in its head and it literally reacts like three seconds later. It just kind of the food drops and then it's like, <laughs> that's cute. All right, uh, then we've got the nightmare catcher. So um, it's a trade in, which is not great for, for the Vendatron because it's a card that lets you banish doesn't matter. It would have been good for me if it was in here, basically. Um, then we've got the Elixir of Volcanic Strength, which is a unique item. It's worth four plus uh, epic quality, which means it adds one to everything else that it sells that day. Uh, and it's worth five money. Then we've got the Cursed Potpourri. And then we've got the Oni Onigiri, which we already looked at. Um, you know what? These don't have to be visible over here, so I'll just put them over here. And then finally, they have the Bristle Hog, which looks like a sort of plant version of a squirrel thing. Uh, this is a another card that if you if you see it in the stock queue, you can get rid of a basic card from your hand, or you can banish any stock card from your hand instead of paying the price for it. So there we go. Okay, so now we reveal for us. So we've got three. We've got Naga Noodles. Uh, import after checkout. Reveal the top card of the stock deck. You may buy it or banish it. Nice. Um, Phoenix Down, that's only if you use it um, after checkout. I think, is it when you when you use that card? Um, it doesn't say banish, so I'm guessing it's one of those cards if you use it to sell to something, I don't know. And that's the same deal there, but that one's worth much more um, quality. And then we've got Ghoul Juice, which has doubled the base quality of a stock you are selling until after checkout. So that one could be really good. Uh, okay, then we do the fixtures. What have we got here? We've got the Ancient Mystery Box, sold immediately. Uh, this one says, add a stock to your offer. Its type changes to match one of the adventurer's desired stock types until the end of checkout. Now that would be very good, although I am kind of, you know, kind of maxing out on uh, fixtures and stuff. Then we've got the enchantment table, which is an ongoing effect. You pay one less buying blue things. Well, that's no good here. Then we've got the red mountain bard, which we saw last turn. And then we've got the um, mini beans vandal artist, which again, really cute. Uh, it says, target any manager until the end of checkout. The base quality of all stock they're selling is reduced by one. Oof. Harsh. Okay, so we're going to carry on now. Uh, we are going to buy, I think, the Phoenix Down. Um, oh, yes. I was going to say, buy, buy the Phoenix Down because they've got not a lot of red items. And that would put me in really good stead to win one. Um, so I'll buy this. Uh, but it costs me one less because of my auto forge. So it actually costs me three money. So let's put five back. Take two... Uh, take two into my supply, leaving with nine money, which is no doubt going to get stolen by one of the Adventurer Thieve cards that's going to come up, because you know it, I'm cursed. 
Um, Thieve Cursed. Mini Beans might be my new favourite. Mini Beans is, is so cute, yeah. I mean, just the fact he's got a giant paintbrush that's like bigger than him or her. Uh, bigger than them. So yeah, that's uh, <laughs> really sweet. Um, okay, so uh, looking ahead. Oh wait, oh yeah, I've already bought that, so I've paid for it. Uh, let's put that there. Do I want to buy one of those? Ghoul juice could be good. I'm really poor on green this time. Um, and that one over there, the Naga Noodles, could be good. Uh, actually, do I want to look at what that card might be? Because if I know what that card is good, I can just buy it cheaper, maybe. You know what? Let's leave it for now. I don't think I want to do that. Maybe I can do this now, actually. Let's do the public scrying pool. Let's use the public scrying pool. Uh... Add, so basically, draw the top three cards of your storeroom, add one to your hand, or banish one to the abyss, and put the rest on top. Did I put them on top last time? I hope I did. I hope I did. If I didn't, I do apologize. But yeah, okay, we're going to do this. We're going to draw three of the cards. Hopefully, we want to get rid of a bad one, maybe. Okay, so look. Let's get rid of, um... Let's get rid of the... One of these bad cards. I don't necessarily need this, because I have a strong hand anyway. Um, so let's get rid of... Wanderer's Cloak. Just get rid of it. Banishing it. Done. So there we go. And these go back on the deck now. So there we go. Uh, okay. So do I want to buy anything else? Or do I want to just go straight in and see what we've got? Let's see what we got. Let's reveal an adventurer. Okay. So we've got the... Sh it's a thief again. <laughs> it's a thief again. All right. The manager with the busiest store discards their highest quality stock. Well, thank you very much for that. Muramasa Blade is discarded. Darn it. Darn you, shoplifter. Seriously, how unlucky is that? Like, to get four thieves. I feel like I should shuffle these, but I'm just going to assume they're all thieves from now on. Okay, so only worth four. Um, however, one uh, each red and green thing is worth one each. Now, obviously, um, the shop bot is going to go first. Their biggest, their best valued um, red item is this one. And their best valued green item is this one. And that means it adds one. So it's actually worth five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine things. I might just give up on that one. The local residents know you're a pushover. Yeah, like, they knew, they saw... Um, they actually came to me, the Thieves Guild, before and said, do you want to hire protection for your store? I said, no, I'm just started. I'm sure this town is full of really nice people. And literally, they just came back and just kept stealing stuff from me. So I regret that decision. Thieves queuing around the block. Yeah, not even queuing, just barging in and just taking their, their whatever they want. And they're pity buying as well. Uh, it sucks, it sucks. But you know what it is? That's the business. I should have paid for protection at the beginning. I really should have. I'll regret that to the day I die. Uh, okay, so anyway, uh, I'm going to not bid on this one. There's not point, no point, because I'm going to have to get rid of a lot of money just to get full money. I, and I'd rather them get rid of those stock for, for nothing. So yeah, these are discarded. They've basically spent seven points to gain four points, though, as well. So that's another tactic you've got to consider. Whew, okay, you can have that one. Have your thieves. To be fair, they are thieves are all going over there. You know what would be really funny, though? Not to distract you, but how's new Paper Mario? Okay, so yeah, I can talk about Paper Mario for a bit. Um, so I was I was really looking forward to the game, because, you know, I love the series. But the Super Paper Mario, I didn't complete the whole thing on the first go, because I just wasn't... It, it, it was good, and it was fun, but it didn't have, like, that kind of appeal. And then Color Splash came out. And then, again, I, I, all, I got, like, halfway through it, and I kind of lost interest because they didn't have the same, like, personality as the other thing. And there were issues with stick um, Color Splash because they used, like... Oh, no, there was another one, Sticker Star, as well. So the last three have been, like, good, but not amazing. So I was like, mm, I'm a bit concerned that it's going to be another game in the franchise that doesn't kind of live up to my expectations from the earlier ones. The um, Mario and Luigi games are generally better than the Paper Mario lately. But So I was a bit holding back a little bit but I was still very excited because you know it's a new one and so far it's really good the the the, the buddy that you you carry is called Olivia she's really funny she's a bit dumb um she's like kind of naive she'll just set she's got really funny character and the, the the sense of humor is really good like the the toad kind of comments I've laughed out loud at the game several times and that's not even with people around me like the games are um gen it is genuinely like funny um so which is good um and uh, so far, the gameplay is really good. The, the, the combat mechanics 
um, revolve around literally revolve around these kind of rings and things which in, where the enemies sort of like jump on you so the puzzle is in trying to like rotate and slide these so that you can get them in optimal positions so it adds a, like a puzzle element to the game which is so far is really good and the combat is so far and really satisfying i guess like um, you still they're adding enemies slowly like that you have to think a bit more about how you're going to deal with them and then um, when you first open the um, the game like the opening scene is brilliant like it's really satisfying just walking around the place and kind of collecting all the confetti there's a really good scene when you exit the first kind of outside the the prologue um, prologue area there's a really funny scene which I don't want to spoil um, but it's really like just quirky and weird and good um, it involves a song uh, so yeah it's good it, so far I have no complaints and it's just really fun I just will probably end up playing it after this before I go to um, to uh, what you call it Paul's live stream later so yeah really really so far very happy with it there's no there's been no other companions that I've bumped into yet but I know that they're probably going to be there because there's like the menu screen implies that there'll be more companions so I don't know when they're going to come up but those are my kind of favorite bit of uh, Thousand Year Doors the individual personalities that the companions had so yeah sorry to kind of dive a diverse um divert on a tangent like a paper mario related tangent but yes good and if you have any questions about the game like ask away uh okay so what was i going to do um they won that one which brings them down to just four extra items um but do i want to i just noticed by the way the oni onigiri has like a ghost shadow in the background of it that's quite cool didn't notice that before uh do i, I maybe i'll buy this guy no i don't want to do I want to, I don't want to steal anyone. They've got they've got rubbish ones over there. I've managed to get all the good ones so far. Staff says okay. <laughs> uh, great. Um, do I want to? Oh, I used this already, didn't I? No, I think I yeah I used this already. So this one's flipped over. Um, I don't want to buy anything. That's the problem. I don't actually don't want to buy anything. Um, that ancient mystery box could be really good. Um, I mean, maybe I could replace it from this because this one is better, but I just don't see the point. Maybe I'll just add something to my hand so I've got more good cards. Let's, um, I was hoping there'd be one of those cards like, uh, here where I can just get rid of a bad stock to buy it, but you know what, it's fine. I'll just buy the ghoul juice, I think, because it gives me more greens. So it costs me three money, one, two, three, which, you know, it doesn't matter because I'm going to get thieved all the time anyway. <laughs> uh, the ghoul juice comes into my hands. And you know what? Let's just start selling to another adventurer. We've got the Vanguard. Okay, so the Vanguard's a fighter, okay? If you win this, which I really hope I do, uh, the Vanguard um, it will gain you a Fighter's Guild rep token. Now, this adds to your um, your kind of personal supply. That's the only part of the name, yes. I, I just felt stupid because I, I don't know um, the language very much. I'm, I'm assuming it means like ghost, but I didn't notice it. I just thought it was like, I, I, it's like, it's like I didn't see it. I didn't see it. And I just thought it was a funny name, but yeah, that makes sense now. Um, well done if you spotted the joke though, because I did, <laughs> I didn't. Uh, yeah, anyway, so you get one of these and this basically grants you, well, it says on the card, grants you plus one quality when selling to adventurers from the fighter's guild. So it's like a one plus one bonus anytime you're selling to a fighter, which I already have one anyway. Uh, so anyway, I really want to win this, but first of all, we're going to get this one to resolve. So the best red item they have is this one, and the best um, green, uh, blue item they've got is this one. So they've got, they're going to bid, uh, not very well actually, they're going to bid for six total. I can beat that, I think. So they're going to want blue and red items. <gasps> I don't think I can bid. I don't think I can outbid, that sucks. Oh no, have I got anything else I can do here? They want blue and red, and I didn't buy any, I didn't have any blue and red. So unfortunately, ugh, they're going to win it. They're going to win it, because I can only beat, I can only offer them six. And they've got six. I can't equal a bid. So while they had a very terrible offer, I did not have a better one. So they are going to win that. Unfortunately, um, they do win that, which sucks. Um, but don't forget, I've got Samuel. Samuel could get that guy back for me later on. And they are now uh, even better they're gonna i want to know actually i wonder if robin is still watching if i steal a vanguard does that mean they no longer have the token that might be answered in the main rule book actually is there a reference in here uh samuel sits 
Oh, no, you, you do get to keep the token, but I could gain a token as well. They would keep the token, but I would get a token as well, right? I assume that's why there's three of them. Um, well done for well done for anticipating that. Like, that's a good rule book. Fast Robin. Yeah, you beat, you beat me reading the rule book, even with the delay. So that's, that's amazing. If you win it next time, otherwise they get two. <gasps> Ooh, I gotta make sure I win that one. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I, it, it's done now. They won. Uh, they lose the um, that blue card, but they keep this one and they keep this. Okay, so now we're going to look and hope. Well, they've not. They're running out of cards, so I could win these next two. Um, but do I want something else to help me first? Um, you know what? I don't want that one, but I have enough money that I think maybe let's just look at the top card of the stock deck because I could buy it for three. A uh, force four money. Ooh, that's good. Oh, that would have helped me out. Damn it. Funny I'd done this last time. So this is another card that allows you to potentially get rid of a staff member to, 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 um, to, to get a free stock card. But this is worth four on its own anyway. So actually it's good value. So I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to buy that. Four money. There we go. So I take one back. Accurate gasp. <laughs> I know. Oh, that's so frustrating. Uh, okay. So now I think I'm in a better position now oh or actually i could just keep it and wait for that because that that's annoying because that that would have been great for me because it would have given me an advantage but now i'm just going to kind of negate their advantage if i win so the scout comes into play well i mean i've got like loads of green cards so i think i'm going to win this one but it's just a ranger guild so um they're going to offer their best card which is green this one's better i think because it's a five so i think they're going to offer that so their total bid is um Four. I can beat that. I can definitely beat that. I've got three and three. Uh, or I can just do this. Let's do this. Three and one and one. I, I can bid five. And actually, that'll be great because I'm getting great value for money as well. So I offer them five quality and five money. So I win. These cards get discarded. Um, this one, I could have doubled the base quality of a stock you were selling. Oh, but I would have to discard this card. Just no point. <gasps> I had that. I had that for the fighter, did I not? Or did I buy it afterwards? I could have used that, right? Do I wreck on that? Or do I just own up my mistakes? I'm owning up to my mistakes. I could have used that to double the base quality of a stock I was selling, therefore mitigating, um, uh, like I could have won the uh, fighter. But you know what, I missed it. It's my fault. That's what you gotta play better to win these games. So yeah, that's unfortunately missed, but I still gain my five money. I still gain the scout into my ledger over here. And uh, I'm gonna hopefully steal that from them next time anyway. Uh, so yeah, we're going to just go straight in, I think, and reveal, um, I could use, no, I don't want to discard my, my dude. I'm going to use him. In fact, that could be my last turn of the game. Oh, I should have discarded that because that one, um, was, um, that one was used to buy that one. So yeah, sorry. I, I, I almost forgot that. So, yeah, I'm going to reveal this and I think my last turn, I'm probably going to use Samuel Soots to try and steal that, depending on what this is, obviously. Okay, so we've got a unique um, person who's the Prophet, Sarnath, Prophet of Tlox. So um, there was a Tlox thing somewhere, right? We looked at it before. Where did it go? Where did it go? Is it one of the discarded ones? Probably. Anyway, so we've got Sarnath, Prophet of Tlox. They've got seven money. They're after green and blue items. Could be good for me. Um, after checkout, look at the top three cards of the Adventurer deck. You may add one to your ledger and bottom the rest. I have to win this one. After checkout on that card. Okay, so I think... I need to win this one. I'm in a good position, I think. So anyway, um, did they bid with that one? But they didn't gain it, right? So they get that back. Okay, so this one is going to get their best blue, which is this one, and their best green, which is this one. Well, this one's worth more money, so yeah. Um, then they're going to do that. Then it's going to be uh, seven to, to beat. Seven to beat. I can do that, I think. Yes, I can win. I can win. The only annoying thing is, though... The only annoying thing is that I will not be able to win that one if I win this one. So, do I want to win it? <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Do I want this one? Oh, actually, no. I don't have to use Samuel this turn, do I? I can use him on another turn. Brilliant. So, I'm going to bid five. Uh, I'm gonna just going to bid this. So, that's three, seven, nine. So, I definitely win. I win this one. I'm giving him 11 stuff for seven money, but I can't lose that one because that's going to give me an extra adventurer. So that one goes. None of those cards have a ability that what happens when you sell. So I get rid of those. I will get the maximum seven money, um, seven money from Sarnath. And then 
the after checker look at the top three cards of the adventurer deck and i'm going to add one to my ledger how many of these do you reckon are going to be thieves by the way i'm going to say at least one Ooh, i was wrong but wrong in the good way so uh this one has an after checkout ability uh, which i can activate if i take him so of course i'm going to take them so i get a major skilled rep token and now i have some fighting uh chance against them <laughs> so i'll take this thank you very much that was a great turn uh, so that's the end of the round because I'm not going to buy anything else. Um, I'm going to leave it. They keep those cards, by the way. So that's the end of the round. So um, I think what happens now is these cards, they didn't get spent. So they're going to go into their, um, they're going to go into their ledger uh, as well as that. There wasn't a red card on that last one, right? No, because they would have, they would have been able to win, uh, use that ability, which means I would have had to bid more. But anyway, that's fine. Um, these cards, oh, I now keep a card. I'll keep the Phoenix down and I'll draw up to five, which means I actually have, um, well played. Thank you. <laughs> so I get these cards and I need to shuffle again now. So it's a good time to ask any questions if you have any. Um, I'm going to flip these over. I'm going to discard, sorry, banish all of these. Banish all of these cards. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Got two two days left. We'll try and breeze through these because I did. Uh, I am taking my time with this game, but I'm enjoying it. I'm very much enjoying it. Um, but yeah, let's get shuffle of these. I uh, want to get a good shuffle, and I actually want to try and start getting rid of some of these basic stock cards because they do me no good. They just clog up my hand. Um, okay, so there we go. I'm gonna draw one more. Hopefully, it's a good one. No, nope, not a good one. That's fine. Uh, the the now I draw. Um, now I draw seven cards for this one. Seems a lot, but it's right, seven cards. So uh, one, two, three. I'm gonna have to do this a little bit. Uh, okay, so the, we've seen all of these before, I think. The Nightmare Catcher, I think, came up, I'm not sure. We've got the Naga Noodles times two, which again, has an ability that the Vendatron can't use anyway. Um, then we're gonna add three more. We've got the Moth Silk Garb, which is a good red card. The Blood wand, the Bloodwood Wand with a Soul Sacrifice in it. So it's the same as the one I had. Um, and then the another one. So yeah, they've got two bloodwood. They've got lots of doubles in theirs um, this turn. So now we draw three cards from here to see what we're playing. Another bloodwood wand. I swear I shuffled these cards. I swear I did. Just three of them came up in a row, which is just wild. Then we've got the grumpy grimoire, which is awesome. It's got a little bit of like a grumpy face on it. And this one says uh, review. So it's an end game scoring ability. You add two money to your net worth for each um, of the matching uh, type. Uh, sorry manufacturer of this so this is an actual black forest thing so if i look through my well i can't now but if i look through any of my purchased cards you'll see they have a type on the right hand side this is tamlin this is uh Ivaldi, and this is black forest so if i buy this in fact that one would work very nicely with this one because if i bought them this one would give me two points at the end of the game so maybe i do want to buy that one and then we've got the Dragonberry Blast, um, which is you may use this card to take two additional actions this turn. Okay, uh, okay. so there's that. Then we've got two more fixtures, which again, we're not really looking for it unless something really cool comes along. We've got Public Scrying Pool, which you already have. And we've got Divination Station, which is banish a basic stock from your hand, which I do have. Um, reveal the top card of the stock, stock deck. If its type matches the banished basic stock, I can add it to my hand. Otherwise, you must buy or banish the revealed stock. So I can, um, so I get to add that card to my hand. That's really good. What, for free? That's very good. The art alone is enough to convince me of this game. I'm loving every card. Yeah, oh, well, Digi Sprite. Um, actually, I can tell you who um, did the art with for this game. So it'll be on the box bottom. It's the art of the game. Nope, the art isn't there, but it'll be in the rule book, I'm sure. I definitely saw it somewhere. Um, Where's the uh, where's the credits? Okay, the uh, the illustrators and actually their their Twitter accounts are here as well. So I'm going to announce those. Announce. I'm going to tell you, uh, Moniak Schilder, who is at Monshi underscore Art, and Stephanie Bollen at Steph Scribbles. That's S T E F Scribbles, and the first one is M O N S C H I underscore Art. So if you want to. Um, follow that artwork and maybe see more of their work that's how you can contact them so yeah thanks for doing such a great job everybody involved in this project actually it's one of the highlights of um, this year for me so far so yeah 
Awesome. Okay. Uh, so anyway, I think I might want to take that because that seems like a quite a uh, push your luck sort of thing. Um, so we've got Elaria, the overqualified, who is a unique character. Again, look at the artwork on it. It's amazing. Uh, this character says, choose a stock type. Um, one of those three. All stock you are selling becomes that type until the end of checkout. Well, oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't do the new daily bulletin, so let's do that first. Regarding payday, the guilds have defeated a dungeon boss, so their members have more disposable income in their pockets. Remember to upsell your products. Every adventurer this round has an extra two money in their um, pocket. Uh, Robin says, oh, well, Staff says, never forget the artist. They usually do a great job and often don't get the attention. They're greed. They should be getting more attention. And then Robin says they were absolutely amazing and has helpfully provided the handles of the artists in question. So thank you very much for doing that. Okay, so uh, everybody's going to have extra two money. So this is a really good day to win adventurers. And I wonder if I just, hmm, I wonder if I try and nab that one now. Because look, they've got, um, they've got hardly any red cards. I'm talking about the Vanguard. They have, they have, they have a blue card, which is two. And they have a red card, which is three. So their total to beat will be six. And I could do that with these two so um i feel like i feel like i want to start that now <laughs> um you know what okay so choose that's fine um banish two basic stock cards from your hand and or the reorder pile uh okay so oh and then we reveal two three of these well not reveal we just put three face down here and then we start now i uh really want to buy these because if we look at my hand at the moment i really need to spend money on these so I'm gonna do this I'm gonna buy this one which is four uh, so four money that one's only gonna cost me one actually I may as well buy that so you know what let me just do all of my turns unless there's something I'm missing um, as in I should do something first but all of that's gonna cost me four six seven money which is really good for three cards yeah, so let's just spend all of that. I, the reason it's seven is because it's two plus four and then one cheaper for this because of my auto forge so there we go I'm going to buy all of these. Uh, this one, uh, you may take two additional actions this turn. Cool. Okay. Uh, not that it matters so much in a single player game. But yeah. Uh, okay, so there we go. All of these cards are now mine. I'm going to do very well red and blue, which is Vanguard. I want the Vanguard. But we'll see how it plays out first. Um, maybe getting rid of them, uh, their cards might be good. I mean, I'm thinking of a really good position. Oh, they actually, sorry, they have a red card of four there. So it's a four plus two, no, seven. So I'd have to beat seven, which I could by just four, five, six, seven, eight. So I could actually do it with two cards. And they have nine money. So you know what, let's just do that now. So I'm gonna use Samuel Soots. Before we reveal anything, yes, there might be an even better one here. Wait, that is silly, isn't it? But I don't have to outbid for them. And maybe they can spend a red card so I don't have to spend so much stuff. You know what, it's fine. Let's just reveal um, an adventurer. I think I wanna do this. Banish a basic stock card from your hand. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm going to buy this, and this is going to take over from the Auto Forge because I think I've used a good amount of that. So I'm going to switch that up. That cost me four money. Um, and then, basically, I'm going to use it right away. Um, actually, you may look at the top card of any stock deck, fixture, or staff deck. If I look at it, I can get rid of the appropriate card look. I've got a red, a green, and a blue. So that's perfect combo. So let's use that right now. I'm gonna do that. We're gonna look at the stock deck. Oh, it's a blue card. It's a blue card, good to know. Um, and now I'm gonna use this card. Banish a basic stock card from your hand. I'm gonna banish the blue card. Banishing that, I'm gonna put it there. Reveal the top card of the stock deck. Oh, look, it matches. <laughs> so I get to add this to my hand. And this is banished. Um, otherwise, you must banish or buy the card. Oh, well, look at that. That was a wonderful combo. And now I have a great card. It's the Philosopher's Stone. Um, and actually, do you know what I haven't been doing is right reading the um, flavor text of this. But you know what? I won't read them because it'll be something that you can do if you want to buy the game, which you're probably thinking of doing after watching this. But it's this one says, Warning, do not break the laws of equivalent exchange. Not entirely sure what that means, but... The, the flavor text is very good in this game as well. Uh, okay, so I have loads of stuff going on now. Um, <laughs> uh, so uh, what I'll do next is um, I will 
reveal an adventurer. I think I'm in a good enough position now where I can still get that vanguard and spend money on this. Let's just see what happens, though. So we've got the scout, which is a green card. Well, actually, I'm definitely not going to win this. But the good news is they're going to spend a four card to gain five money. Damn it. Okay, fair enough. Uh, okay, so they are going for that. They've got this five total quality. Uh... That's actually good for them. They did well there. I can't outbid that, so they're going to get that. They're definitely just going to straight up get that. Uh, so then that gets discarded, and that goes back there. So then I'm down to six. Now I'm wondering whether I should um, go and do another adventurer, or if I should try and steal the vanguard now. Let's do another adventurer. Let's do it. All right. Uh, so we've got the scout again. Oh, they are going to win it again. <laughs> I, do, I have, do I have anything that allows me to... Um, to, uh, like, bump up my abilities on the other ones. Probably not. Uh, no. Nothing that I can use, really. Oh, actually, no, nothing. So, again, they're going to win this one, but it's fine. It's only lots of money that they're going to win. <laughs> uh, so they're going to use a green card there. So they're going to use that. And I didn't even bother it. They're going to win it because they can't beat that. So, yeah, they get another scout. Well, good for you. Uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so this goes. So, actually, they're going to gain... Uh, well, that, ah, the interesting thing is they're worth extra money, but they're not worth extra money to them. So actually, um, that's interesting. It's no nice of you to give that one to Vendatron. <laughs> I wish I didn't have to, but I have to. The game rules tell me I have to. Um, yeah, they, they're loving me at the moment this round. Uh, to be fair, they had a lot of cards. They were going to do very well anyway. You know what? I'm going to reveal this last one. I'm going to use my last... Actually, let's use this. I may as well. Look at the top three cards of your storeroom. You may add one to their hand or banish one to the abyss. If there's a basic stock card, I think I'm at the point where I'll start banishing. Yeah, I mean... Oh, look at... Uh, that would have been so good. I could have won. It's fine. I'll banish, I'll banish the blue card. I don't want crappy cards anymore. So yeah, those ones go back on the top of the stock room, so I'm going to get it next turn. Anyway, um, now we're going to reveal the last one, and then I'm probably going to use my um, my ability to steal that one as my last action of the game. So we're going to see what's up here. Okay, so Q. Each manager can sell a maximum of three stock to this adventure, which is fine because it doesn't matter anyway for them. But after checkout, gain a discount token pay one less when buying from the top of any deck. So if I win this one, I get a discount token. Would have been nice if it came up earlier on, but it's all good. So I'm going to reveal the offer for Vendatron. They're going to take their best of each color. So their best red is this one. Their best green is this one. Their best blue is this one. And their total is um, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, because it's a red. Uh, no, it's not a fighter, so they don't ignore that. So it's nine. Four, five, four, six, eight, nine. I got to beat nine here, but can I do it while still saving enough to win against them? In fact, looking at the Vanguard, their best ability is going to be four, five, six, seven. So I just need to keep eight value for that, which I can do just from these cards, actually. Uh, actually, these cards. Five. Yeah, so I could keep... I think I'll keep those ones and see if we can outbid him with, with um, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I can do four, sorry, five... Six, seven, oh, eight, nine, ten. Perfect. So, uh, sorry, this is a bit sort of fiddly, but this one's worth plus one for every other stock card I'm selling. So, it's actually worth four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So, I have one. Um, I've obviously over um, paid for them, but they're actually going to give me nine money, not seven, because of this. So, yeah, these are all going to get sold for nine money. That's fine. That's fine with me. Nine money is good. Let's take ten and put one back. And then uh, what I'm going to do is then I'm going to use my... Oh, afterwards, I gain the discount token. Wonderful. Um, then these go back, but obviously we'll just keep the blue and the red one because I'm about to make an offer for the Vanguard. Um, so those ones go... Oh, let's just put them there. And then the last thing I'm going to do... Well, this guy comes into my... Um, he's an executive, by the way. This is the first executive we've seen. And then the last thing we're going to do is going to use Samwell. He's going to bring the Vanguard back out. Uh, and I am definitely going to win this one, I hope, if I've played this correctly. Uh, so they're going to make an offer of four, five, six, seven. And I'm going to make an offer of eight. Done. Eight money gets me... 10, 9 money. I'm selling for 10, but they only got 9 because of the ability. So those ones go there. After checkout, um, you reveal the top card of the stock deck. You may buy it or banish it. So let's use that. Let's use that ability because I used it, I guess, right? And it's not a thingy one. 
So I think I get to look at the top card of the stock deck and buy it, uh, which is Erudite Eyewear. Um, that is the same card. Do I want it? Not for full money, maybe. Well, it's going to come out next turn anyway, right? So, hmm. Well, it is... No, it's not worth it, I don't think. I'm going to buy it or banish it. Let's just banish it. That's fine. And then, uh, that card gets discarded. Did I take the money? I'm pretty sure I did. Um, wait. No, I should have another money, right? Because I took nine from that, so I should have more money. So, ten. Take one back. Put that there. Nine. After checkout, gain a fighter's guild token. Yes, please. So, I'm going to have a benefit now of selling to either fighters or mages. And this one comes into my ledger here. Uh, wonderful. And then we keep one of our cards. Well, we're going to keep this card. Uh, then we're going to draw back up to five cards. So we'll one, two, three, four. And then uh, basically we are going to discard, or sorry, banish all of these. Um, these cards get kept by um, uh, Vendatron. So we'll put them there. And then uh, we're going to reveal the next daily bulletin. So this is the last round, everybody. Uh, it's regarding the wild hunt. General warning. A monster has escaped the dungeon and adventurers have been tasked with hunting it down. Expect demand for additional supplies. This day, each adventurer desires exotic stock in addition to the stock tag on their card. So everyone's going to have a green. Oh, uh, so I'm going to flip all of these back for free. And then uh, I'm going to uh, hire back Samwell Suits, just in case they take someone that I really want. So let's take, pay two money back for that. And we'll hire him back. He's been very helpful. Um, so we're going to reveal the eight cards now for um, for Vendatron, which is crazy. Okay, so they've got the Transmutation Slime, um, which is, again, if you've used that card, it allows you to banish another stock from your hand to draw three from the storeroom. So that one's good at recycling through and making your deck good. In fact, the last game I played, my housemate won with that card because they had that one and another one and other cards that manipulated their hands. They always had like so much stuff to bid with. Um, we've got the Corium Chain Mill, which we is another banished stock card from your hand instead of buying it. It's Forge Steamed Buns, Corium Short Sword, Mischievous Carbuncle, again, which is very cute. Um, we've got the Importonomicon, which is a unique card. At the end of the game, it's worth two points for every other Tamlin uh, stock in your store. And I did have a few of those, but unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to access that. And then the last two for this round, uh, for this game, actually, we've got the Ghoul Juice and the Pocket Dragon, which is another unique one. Can you see that one at the top? Do you even need to see it? Well, you can kind of see it. If I just shuffle all of these down just a little bit, you'll probably be able to see it. There we go. There we go. So you can see it. Oh, you've got a little bit of shine there. So... Um, Sorry about that. Anyway, uh, we are going to reveal three stock from here. So we've got the Dredgewater Mimic. Uh, if you rev when you sell, you reveal the top two cards of your storeroom, sell any that you can, then add any remaining cards to your hand. So that one's good at basically getting more money. Um, then we've got the Dragonberry Blast, which we looked at. Not so good in a three, uh, one player game. And the Transmutation Slime. Uh, okay, fine. Then we've got the Divination Station again, which we already have. And then the enchantment table, which lets you buy blue stuff for cheaper. Then you've got the um, stock rat, which we talked about before. And then the blue mountain sentinel, which we've also had before. Okay, then we've got three final adventures. Remembering that we add green stock demands to each of these adventures today. Um, and you know what? Do I want to... There's no green... Well, there is one green there. So let's buy that first of all. It's going to pay for itself, I'm sure. Cost me three money. So we'll take two change... Um, any of these adventurers, by the way, with red or blue um, uh, guild symbols will actually get me... Um, well, I should have I should have had a bonus from selling to that because it was a fight. I forgot about that. Oops. Um, but never mind. Okay. So, uh, I'll buy that. I, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Uh, if there's any way to draw cards, that would be great. Uh, but I... Oh, actually, here we go. Let's use my public scrying pool which looks at the top three cards of my storeroom, adding one to the abyss. Actually, before we do that, let's look at this. I'm going to try and do what I did last time and try and get myself a free thing. But what I need to do is look at the top card of the stock deck first. Okay, so it's a green stock card. So, uh, looking at my hand, I've got no basic green cards. No, I do. I have one of these. I could get rid of that. So that's fine. But I'm going to do this anyway. So that one lets me look at the top card, which I've done. Then I'm going to reveal the top three cards of my hand. I can add one or banish one. 
Okay, so in this instance, look, I have some really good cards which I can add to my hand. Um, the only thing is that if I get rid of this one, no, it's not worth it. It's because I've got a cheap green card that I can get rid of anyway. So I think I'll take the, um, I think I'll take the, the better one, which is the Muramasa Blade. Let's take this. I don't have many blue cards. Neither do they, actually. Hmm. 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 I wonder if it might be worth taking the... Because their red card at the moment is worth... What do you think, guys? What do you think? Because I'm thinking maybe it's good. It's a good option for either of those. If I take the blue, I'm more likely to win any blue... Um, any blue kind of, like, customers, adventurers. But the same with this. If I did this, I'd be more competitive at taking a red ones. But green is the, the one of the day. Everybody's got green. So I have an ability on both. I think I'll take this one because it's generally... You know what? I'm going to take the blue one. I'm going to take the blue one. Uh, these ones go back on the top of there. Uh, so I do that. I've, I've done that. So that goes there. And I am going to now banish a green card from my hand, which, yes, is crazy, but I'm going to get another one anyway. So I banish it and I reveal this. If it matches a green, which it does, it gets added to my hand and I just get it. So there we go. Uh, lots of these are about... Ooh, Banish another, another stock from your hand. Draw three cards from the storeroom. I'm going to retcon it slightly. I rev If I took the... If I took the... Oh, no, I can't. I can't do that. I can't do that because I, I, I technically didn't pay enough attention to that. If I had seen that, if I had that card in my hand already, I would have been like, okay, well, if I get rid of the... Um, if I if I if I keep the green one card, I could get rid of that, gain this, and then I can get rid of the other poor stock card from my hand just to get three more cards from here. Now I could technically get rid of a card from here because this will get me the uh, the the red card that I need. So maybe maybe it's worth getting rid of this. I'm going to get rid of this just to draw three more cards from here because I've already got a blue which I think will overtake any. Well, it won't, actually. Okay, you know what? I'm going to get rid of that anyway. So I'm going to banish um, another stock card from my hand, which is... No, that's going to score me points. <laughs> okay, this is tough. You know what? I'm not going to do it yet. I could buy a card from here. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to buy that card. Sorry, this is going all over the place. I'm going to buy this card. It costs me two money. Then I'm going to banish this. This is going to be a banish another stock card from my hand to discard this card. Yes. Uh, oh, I did have one of those already. Oh well, uh, banish this card to draw three from my hand. So yeah, this gets discard, that gets banished, this gets discarded, and I draw three cards from my hand. I just realized I'm actually going to get rubbish cards, aren't I? That's fine. That's fine. It probably wasn't worth it to do that, but whatever. And then I'm going to buy that one over there as well, because, you know, you want as many cards as you want going into the final round. And it's worth the, its value anyway. Um, so, yeah. Now we're going to go in and we're going to sell to this adventurer here. Oh, I've used this, by the way. So there we go. Uh, so let's reveal this adventurer. We've got the Wayfinder. After checkout, gain a Gilder's Rep token. So green, um, a Ranger's Guild Rep token. Uh, obviously, that doesn't apply here. But remember, we've got two greens on here. So they're going to offer one red. Their best red, which is either one. But let's just do the one which is worth more money. So they're going to offer that. And then their best two green items. One is a five, which is going to be worth double. And then their next best, which is going to be this one, which is going to be worth double as well. So that's eight, 16, 17, 18, 19. 20. I've got to beat 20 to get 7 money. Is it worth it? Probably nice. Probably not. 7 to get 20. Although I could let him have that one and then steal him back. <laughs> I would have lots of opportunity here to, to 20. I got lots of green cards and I have some red cards. But part of me is thinking, yes, if you take that, spend all your best cards and then I can just steal it back later on, I think. That's probably what I'm going to do. I'm going to let them take it so they get rid of that card. They get rid of those cards and they take the 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 wayfinder, add it to the ledger, and now they only have some five cards to go. And we're going to just reveal another adventurer. So okay, so we've got the mage. This one is going to be like the other one, the adept, sorry, which is going to give you another blue token. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to oh, it's got a green and two two uh sorry a blue and two green. Meaning that they're going to offer three items, the Venditon's going to offer three items, and the green ones are going to be worth double. So their best blue item is obviously the Importonomicon. The green item, well, both of these are going to go. So that's actually worth double. So those are worth double. 3, 6, 9, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 
17 for this one. Now, I wouldn't mind getting my hand on this person for the money uh, and to sell my stuff. So actually, what I need to be is 3, 6, 9, 12, 17. 17, but greens are worth double. So that could be worth 6, um, 12, and then, and then a, a blue. Do I have a blue 5 in my hand? I do not, but I could sell... Oh, I have a 4, though. So that would be worth 16. And I could sell 17, 18. Now that is a lot of money. And I've got to make sure that if I'm going to go and steal them. Hi, Monique. Thank you for joining. It's always a pleasure to see you. How are you doing today? Um, have you heard of this game? If you have any questions about it, just ask. Um, I'm loving it so far. This is solo mode that I'm testing out the rules for. Uh, oh, actually, because they're a blue person, I have an advantage here. I have already got an extra quality to sell, sell to them. So I actually only need... Wait, was it 3, 16, 17? So I only need 17, not including this. So 3, 6, 9, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I guess I could just do this instead, 17, 18. That would be all right, right? Uh, and then if I want to take the Wayfinder, I need red and green, which I would have. Um, I could have it. I could win. Uh, I haven't heard of it yet. Oh, okay. So let me tell you a little bit about it. This is called Adventure Mart. Um, it's got one of the best artworks in the game just looking at that and then looking at like the mimic over here and just like the artwork is just so look at that look at him looks like a chubby little slime uh so it's got one of the best artworks in a game and it's a it's like a it's like a deck building game where you are bidding for the custom of these adventurers and you're trying to sell them the sort of things in your deck it's not very you know thorough description but it is awesome yes it's cute with capital k um, okay, so if I want to take the Wayfinder, I need to get um, red and green, and I need, well, if we're looking at this right now, their best greens is going to be 12, plus this red here, this is going to be 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16, um, I didn't gain a green token, oh, they do get a green token though, so they're going to have an extra 17 to sell to that. So I'd need to beat 17 with what I've got, which is 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. I could take it. I could take that, actually. So there is a possibility. You love it. I know it's great. Um, okay, so actually I will try and take this because this is ultimately the game, right? So I'm going to try and bid with this. So it's 3, 6, 9, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, um, 19. And I think that ov overtakes them. So yeah, let's just, let's just take it. 19. This might bite me in the ass because, you know, it might not whatever but yeah i'm gonna bid all of this all of this is gonna give me seven money i'm spending i'm giving them like 12 15 uh stuff for seven that's awful value but it's money in my pocket you know which is what i want uh so there we go that comes to me and i gain another blue token uh so i have a bonus with blues and then we're going to reveal this we're going to reveal this Oh, no. So it flips down their fi highest cost fixture, otherwise loses two money. Okay, well, I'm going to lose money. Well, I told you all the thieves were going to come out. The swindler's back. Um, so uh, we're going to blue and green for this one. So blue and green. Um, yeah, that's worth that. So blue and green. So that's going to be four. Oh, and another green, actually. So actually, this one is worth four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, sixteen, seventeen, seventeen money, and I'm just going to be like, no, you have that, it's worth four bucks, and you're going to spend ten money to get it, so yeah, you can keep that one, thank you very much, uh, it gets rid of all of those, you can take the swindler, and then I'm going to activate the wayfinder, come back wayfinder, well you're coming back, I'm s using Samuel Sutz's ability to bring the wayfinder back into the game, and he's only going to be able to offer him this and this, which is awful. Come on, Vendatron. You're a terrible robot. Um, so it's going to basically be like two, three, because of this. And then four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, I, however, I'm going to basically bid ten. <laughs> so this goes here. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Done. I win. These cards get discarded. I get the money, seven money. And then... Uh, I will take the Wayfinder and the token for whatever it's worth, and that's the end of the game. Although, having said that, I should have bought those. No, it's fine. doesn't matter. So, that's the end of the game. Okay. Uh, these are going to go back into there. This goes into his ledger, their ledger, sorry. 
And now we're going to find out the final scores. Uh, all of these cards that I've purchased throughout the game, they do count towards my score. The fixtures come back. Staff are not involved anymore because they don't count the points at the end of the game. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, use the rules to work out the, um, the points. After day five is complete, Adventure Mart HQ will check your net worth to see how you fared against the Vendatron. Your net worth is calculated the same as the base game rules. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for any uh, cards in here that have a, a review um, thing, which I think none of them do. Uh, very poor. Yeah, so all of these are worth nothing to me. If they had a review thing on there, it would mean like points at the end. So we ignored those. However, I also will now count up... I'll get rid of all of the basic stock from my cards because they are not worth anything. Uh, which actually did quite well. I think I managed to get rid of quite a lot of the cards, the basic stock cards in the end. Um, uh, s then I will um, add these values here. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Add to all of these. So 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 23, 26, 31, 35, 38, 41... 44, 48, 52, but I'll put that aside because it's got a review thing. 57, 59, 61, and I add up my money. So 62, 63, 73, 83. I'm on 83 points. That's my net worth. So I've just got to beat Net Vendatron. So I've got to be 83. Okay, and Vendatron score is follows. Add up all the purse values of the adventurers. Add up the total of the buy cost of each of the stock in its ledger and calculate any gold earned from review things in uh, in its ledger. Yes. Okay. So let's see if they got any review ones. No, they didn't. Okay. So no review there. Oh, and actually I didn't get 83. My final points is actually not 83 because I get to add two for any of the other things in here. So 83 plus... Um, 83 plus... Uh, 83 plus 2, 85, uh, 87, 89, 91. So 91 is my final score, sorry. 91, I've got to beat 91. Let's see, I think, I think, I think it could work. Well, that's mine, so let's add up, basically adding up all of the gold, and let's check if they've got any review abilities. None in there, um, nothing in here, I don't think. Oh no, they do have, they do have a review ability, actually. They have... Uh, wait, did they not have a review? Oh, no, they discarded it. Okay. Oh, they banished it. Sorry. So, yeah, there we go. So, let's just add up all of the money. We've got 4, 9, 14, 18, 22, 26, 29, 31, 33, 35, 39, 42, 44, 47, 50, 53, 56, 59, 62, 65, 67. I am victorious. I win against Vendatron. Um, so yeah, that's the game. That is the game. Um, how did you find it? If you're watching still and you have any thoughts about the game, I'd love to hear. Did you think it looked like a game you'd like to play? Um, does the solo mode seem like the game is now going to be more likely something you'll buy? Or, or did it not maybe not meet up to your standards? Um, I like the game. Thank you. Thank you not again. Thank you, Robin. Um, I genuinely think this adds to the game. I think that this was a really good thing. I like I like that you have to then consider when to kind of throw away cards. Like there were times, I don't know if you noticed, but there were times when I chose not to um, to buy or even bid when I could have because I know that they would actually have lost value um, on the cards when they when they bid for this for example and they had to get rid of three things but only for four money and so that was a way to them to get lots of stock out of their hands so I think it uh, it was 61 versus 93 I think I, th I definitely got 93 um, but their score was like 61 or something I can't remember I mean to be fair you could just go back and, and like skip back I, I generally can't remember um, but yeah that's the final score was a quite a big win for me but I was very fortunate that I had um, situations where there were rounds um, that Vendatron had a lot of uh, one color card and that color card did not come up in the round in terms of the adventurers and so we weren't very competitive but the game's fun I wonder if there's a way to make it like harder as well uh, maybe maybe the um, I don't know 
I don't know how you'd make it harder, but then, you know, the game is still in beta, the solo rules, so it's possible that they could add something later on that makes it better and more difficult to, to play against. But yeah, that's it, really. Um, let's switch back to my ugly face. Uh, I think this is the way I do it. There we go. So, so I can chat to the camera directly, and let's, 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 like, this give the star of the show, um, some, some coverage again. So this is Adventure Mart. Um, I have been playing the solo beta rules provided by Team DigiSprite, who uh, are the guys that made the game. And um, obviously Hub Games are just the publisher and designed by Sam Taylor. And you know what, I'm just going to give another shout out to the artists. Uh, if you scroll up on the chat, you can find them, but their their names are uh, Moniek, Shilda and Stephanie Bollen. And uh, just so you can see, I'm going to write, I'm going to show their little handles there on the right hand side of that sheet, do you see? So at Monshi, uh, at Monshi underscore art and at Steph Scribbles, because the artwork is the best thing about the game. Uh, well, one of the best things about the game. Monique, no, you are lovely. Um, I really enjoyed it. I'm glad now that I can have the option to play the game solo as well as with other people, because it has been like a, 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 a good... Uh, a good thing, I think, and I think I wish more companies made um, games uh, ru solo rules, like go back over their collection, created solo rules. Um, but then again, I've been very surprised at the number of games that already include them as part of it, and I can only say they they had no idea that they were going to come into this like kind of situation where we're all stuck at home. Um, but they those ones who did it and actually made it, and I know there's some companies that really really build in solo as part of the game and I would kind of like shout out to Stonemaier Games and uh, Portal Games. I think they generally do a really good job of adding solo modes and I'm sure there are other companies that do. And my eyebrow game is on point. I haven't done anything to them, that's just natural. Uh, it's kind of like, yeah, I've always had like thick eyebrows. I used to have like a little, um, like a, a gap. I think it might still be there, but when I was younger, People, uh, like at school, people used to think that I'd done it on purpose. I had this like, little line in my eyebrow. And people were like, oh, you're so cool to have to get that done. I said, but I didn't do it. It's just natural. So, yeah, I don't know what the hell that was about. But uh, thank you. Anyway, very appreciate that um, comment. But yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, I'm going to go now because I'm sweltering. Uh, I'm going to make the most of the next couple of hours, maybe make myself a snack. And then, if you want to join me later on, I'll be, um, I'll be on Paul Grogan aka Gaming Rules is streamed tonight at 8 p.m. British time, that's 7 p.m. GMT, playing Macau by Stefan Feltz. So if you have any tips for me, by the way, um, about that game, uh, that would be lovely. But I don't suppose you do because it's quite an older game, uh, but I'm very excited to learn a new game and play it online. So thank you very much, everyone that tuned in, everyone that commented, everyone that followed, and everyone that donated anything. I really appreciate it. As I as you know, put in the title of the video, I am currently fundraising. So at the end of the month, anything that I gain from revenue from uh, streaming will be going to Black Lives Matter charities, um, which I'm really happy to do. Um, and so if you did feel inclined to donate or support me on Patreon, I do support from as little as $1 a month. But you don't have to. Yeah, I'll still be creating content. It'll just help me maybe get some better equipment so you can actually see the cards, the text. But thank you very much and I really appreciate it. Um, hopefully we'll see you on the next stream. It's probably going to be a Paper Mario stream, not going to lie, but the Thousand Year Door with the voice acting because you know how much people love that. But thank you very much. Have a lovely day uh, or wherever you are and uh, see you on the next stream. But until then, have fun gaming. Bye.